welcome back to another season of high school football on CISN TV. I'm Trent Condon here with you in the pregame show presented by Fairway. An exciting season of high school football gets started here tonight in Class 5A. No, I'm not misspeaking. We got new classes this year and an extra class this season as they have moved now to 5A all the way down to 8 player. So we'll be talking about the big schools this year. No longer 4A. It is now 5A for the big classes. Preseason number one this year. It's a team that played for a title last season in the Unidome, the Southeast Polk running Rams. A lot of returning talent coming back for Southeast Polk as they were upended last year in the Unidome by Ankeny. The defending state champions have a lot returning as well. Of course, also in the top five this year, the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Their long reign finally came to an end last season as they were upended in the state semifinals, but they're raring to go here this season. We're going to take a look around some of the top teams around the area. We'll take a look at the CISN teams that we'll be covering throughout this high school football season and also a little look around the state in the big school class of some of the big teams and names to keep an eye on. But before we get started with that, we are happy to be aboard with you presented by Fairway, a presenting sponsor of all of our coverage all season long, a great Iowa company, and we are happy to be partnered with Fairway here for this football season. Let's get started and let's start with the preseason number one team. These rankings come from the Des Moines Register and it is Southeast Polk. A lot of headliners there for Southeast Polk. Start with their quarterback, Jackson Daly. He made a commitment to Arkansas State out of the Sun Belt. Sun Belt had a great year on the college football scene a year ago. Upset wins from a lot of the programs. He'll be going to Arkansas State, but before that, he wants to bring a championship to Southeast Polk. They were on the precipice a year ago. The lefty has played very well this season. He'll have an opportunity to do it with a lot of big names around him. You look at the headliners there, it's not just the quarterback. Xavier Wampka back for his senior season. Has not made a college commitment yet, but he has got all kinds of offers across the country. Country Wampka, Notre Dame is involved. Ohio State, maybe he'll stay home with the Hawkeyes or the Cyclones. He hasn't made that decision what we do know, one of the hardest hitters from the safety position. He'll also play a little bit of running back with Titus Christensen this season. Do it all safety, Xavier Wampka for the Rams. And also, you look at that team, they are built with big physical guys up front, and there's nobody bigger than Caden Proctor. Proctor, who had an offer from Michigan before he ever played a varsity snap. He's now an upperclassman, still just a junior. He's got two seasons in front of him. The solid tackle will be out there for the Rams this year and looking forward to him. Who's going to be chasing down the Rams, though? Well, at number two, it's the team they face in week one, the Dowling Catholic Maroons. As mentioned, though they didn't win another state championship a year ago, they played some great, great football. Tom Wilson has a squad ready to compete again this year. And for me, it starts at the quarterback position. There, Jackson Smolik, a youngster who saw playing time last year as a sophomore, has made big strides, a big-time arm. He can sling it all over the field. He's got some pretty good weapons to go along with it this year for the Maroons. Then you go to number three. It's another Central Iowa team. That's the defending state champion, the Ankeny Hawks. Though a lot of the names are going to change, there's going to be plenty that you remember from a year ago. The quarterback, though, that'll be different. Jace Bauer. He's off to play in the MAC at Central Michigan. The new quarterback makes the short trek, though, from Centennial, a transfer in J.J. Cole. J.J. had an incredible summer, picked up offers from Iowa State, from Iowa. Alabama is sniffing around. He's got big opportunities in front of him. A big quarterback, six foot six. He's big, he's strong, and he can really throw the football. J.J. Cole for the Ankeny Hawks. He's got Caden Kadolf back for another season. Outstanding running back. He put up big numbers last year. You couple that with Brady McCullough, the wide receiver, and Ryan Crandall on the defensive end will keep everybody in check. Number four in the preseason top 10 from the Des Moines Register, it is Cedar Falls from Northeast Iowa. Great program up there. Coach Remmert does a really good job, and you know they're going to be back in a big-time way this season. And number five in the Register rankings, it is the Valley Tigers. We'll hear later here in the pregame show from Gary Swenson talking about his squad and uh, a team that last year had struggles early on. Really improved throughout the course of the season. Played great in their playoff victory against Urbandale. But then their season came to a close, not on the field, but off of it, as they were not able to play their quarterfinal matchup against Dowling Catholic. A lot of disappointment, but made those offseason workouts, I think, that much more important 
for Valley as they come in to 2021. A lot of other good area schools around also with a chance to check in here to the rankings this season. I really like the squad that Coach Anderson has in Urbandale. I think the Jayhawks have a chance to be really good. Played a youngster at quarterback a season ago in Peyton Roddinghouse. He's back for his junior campaign. A lot of upside with him. they got a good wide receiver in Fredrickson who will be back. And Jalen Ziegler, one of the fastest guys in central Iowa. He's over there at the cornerback spot. He can make some big-time plays. Their rival up there in the northern suburbs, of course, the Johnston Dragons. they got a quarterback back in Jack Roots who comes back. He also will kick. He'll punt. He'll do a little bit of everything. They had the upset heard around the state a year ago as they beat Donnelly Catholic. We'll see if they can build upon that this season. Blake Tubbs is back for another season at the running back spot. Saw some action last year as a sophomore. Really talented guy in that backfield for the Dragons. Ankeny Centennial, how about the Jaguars? Trey Porter, he can do a little bit of everything. Plays both ways. Last year, the Jaguars maybe played as many sophomores as Coach Bazzetti ever has in his career. Those guys are now upperclassmen. Expect to jump forward this year from the Jaguars. We go to Waukee, the two now. Waukee schools, a big change this season. Waukee High and Waukee Northwest. Northwest basically brought the whole coaching staff with them to the new school from former Waukee High. Going to be a look there, going to be a change. Coach Baker takes over at Waukee coming in. A lot of new looks there. We'll see. On paper, have to think Northwest has a chance to take the big step forward here in year number one. And, of course, you can't forget about the city schools. Is this the year that a city school finally upends somebody from the suburbs? A lot of people are pointing maybe to week two with Des Moines Roosevelt getting their opportunity against Waukee. A big possibility there. Roosevelt, they got a quarterback in a big-time way in Jamison Patton. They're going to be there. Of course, Hoover every single year. You know, they're going to be up for a fight. You look at Lincoln, a lot of good football being played also in the city schools. We'll see if this is the year that they can take a step forward. It's a different look. It's a different season, but it's still going to be hard-hitting football, and we'll have it here all season long for you on CISN TV. We'll take a quick timeout. Conversation with the coaches coming up next. We'll hear from the coaches from your game presented by Elite Eye Care. When we come back, it's Prep Preview on CISN TV presented by Fairway. A business name is important, sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. Holtz Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm proud of what we've accomplished at Holt. Our team is leading the way in providing the latest in home comfort solutions, and we have fun doing it. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. And at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Niggett, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at RushOnBusiness.com. Let Rush Niggett help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Niggett, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle, regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease, whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. Welcome back 
to Prep Preview on CISN TV. I'm Trent Condon as we get ready for our conversation with the coaches presented by Elite Eye Care. Up first, the Valley Tigers longtime head coach here as we get ready for week one of the high school football season. Welcome back with our conversation with the coaches as we go to West Des Moines Valley and the Tigers as they get ready for another season. Longtime head coach Gary Swenson joining us here today as we get ready for the kickoff of the football season. Coach, we're going to take a look back and a look forward, but another year, another year of challenges. But after 2020, got to feel a little bit more normal this season for you. Well, it has been a much more routine start. You know, I know we're not out of this pandemic, but it's been different this year. You know, we're not the the exposure and the response to exposure and the contact tracing and all of that stuff that we spent so much time on last fall. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent, we're not doing it right now. So that's allowed us to focus a little bit more on on coaching and coaching football, which is what. It's been a it's been a different start, more routine, which I'm not taking for granted now. I mean, it's been kind of it's been fun, so it's been good. Coach, your season came to a close last season, not on the field but off of it, as uh, the game against Downing Catholic in the playoffs was canceled and Downing got to move on. Had to be just such a difficult end to the season. You guys were playing certainly your best football of the season at the end of the year. Uh, take us back to that disappointment that week and leading up to the cancellation. Well, it was it was just weird. It was so it was so abrupt. Uh, we practiced all the way up till Thursday. And then with the positive cases that were showing up and as they started to contact trace the exposure, we had half our team that was going to be either quarantined because of exposure or illness. And we, we just couldn't even field a team. And it wasn't, it wouldn't have been fair to Dowling to not let them know where we were at. And at one point that day we were going to try and play. Uh, I told Brad Rose, our athletic director, I said, uh, we're going to play this game. I don't care what we're left with, but you know, they at, at about two 30 that afternoon, they said, we, you know, we just can't do it. So we walked out on the practice field and had to relay that news to our team, which was not something you want to ever do. And it, it was just a tough way to end. We had been playing our best football. we had gotten better and we had to, we just weren't very good at the start of the year, but you know, as a coach, you hope your team is playing its best football at the end, and we were. So, you know, the the last month of that season, we really made a lot of progress. It was just unfortunate the way it had to end. Well, a big piece of that was the improvement of your offensive line. You saw that growth happen throughout the course of the season. The good news for this year is you get a lot of those kids back. So starting up front, I know offensive line always important for what you guys do, and doesn't matter the level of football. Offensive line always a big important part. But when you look at it this season, got to feel good to have that building block in front of you. Oh, that's always where you'd like to start with your team. And we do have, we do have some players back that played. We went through some – Real growing pains at the start of that year, and we're not completely healthy up there this year, but at least we have some experience back, and we'll be getting a couple of kids back as we go. We're starting out the year just a little bit nicked up, but, you know, it's still good to have some experience back there. It all, you know, Hank Lucas is our center, and he can really play all five positions. He's without question, our best offensive lineman. And he kind of anchors that group for us. And we expect him to have a real solid season. Your quarterback uh, last year was kind of a back and forth with Rubley, who came in, then wasn't able to play. But I, I thought Mason did a really good job for you guys when he was in there. Now he's moving back and forth. You had him on one side of the football, then back to quarterback. Now strictly a quarterback for you guys? He is. Uh, I, I thought he handled last year extremely well. You know, we I think it was the walkie week when they finally ruled, you know, Jake ineligible. And that was on a Thursday night. And we took Mason from safety and basically 
inserted him at quarterback with about 60 minutes of work and he, and he did the best he could. And then each week he got better and he was playing really well at the end. He's just a smart kid, a tough kid, kind of a natural leader. The qualities you want in your quarterback, he's, he's got them. Uh, you know, he's not that division one recruit. He's just a good high school athlete, real good basketball player. He's been a baseball player and just a tremendous student. So, you know, you don't have to tell him things more than once. And he, he, he has a good feel for the game and, you know, he can improvise and extend plays and he, ma he makes his teammates right at times with his decision making. And we're, we're really excited about him. Also got a good building block there with Eli Reardon back for his senior season. The tight end committed to play at Notre Dame. And I was talking to his dad, Scott, earlier in the week. And I said, you know, he's built a lot differently than the rest of your Reardons. He's tall, but he's really athletic. Yeah, he's probably our best athlete, both physically, just from a, you know, size standpoint, but, but a, his skill level as well. He runs really well. He's one of the fastest kids on our team and has really good hands. Uh, if we can get it close, he's going to catch it. So we need him to play really well and have a big year. And obviously everybody we play knows that. So he's going to attract a lot of attention. It's just a matter of us being able to either use him as the focus of a play or as a diversion and try to create something for somebody else. But he can block and catch, so he can do it all. Take us over to the defensive side of the ball, Coach, and talk about what the Tigers have over there. Drew Henderson had a nice season last year as a junior. Tell us about that 11 over on the other side of the football. Well, Drew was the only player we returned <clears throat> with any significant playing time. So he, he's our one of our inside linebackers, and, and, and he's really solid. He has a good understanding of what we're trying to do. He gets people lined up. He can tackle. Uh, he's probably got as good a hands as anybody on our team and we'll, we'll use him a little bit offensively, but he's, he's involved in almost every phase of the game for us. Uh, I think he's on almost every kick team and as a linebacker, he'll, he'll have to kind of anchor things for us up front uh, or in that front seven. So we, we expect and need him to have a great season. I, I really like where he's at as well. Coach, uh, as you look at week one here, you guys have Waukee Northwest coming in. Waukee, in general, lost a lot. Now you got a second high school there. What's scouting been this week for Waukee Northwest? Well, we're kind of operating on some assumptions, and you know, that's dangerous, but that's all we have to go on. And that's based on the coaching staff, who is pretty much intact from Waukee High School. Most of those coaches went – to the new building up at the Northwest campus. So I'm sure they're going to have some wrinkles that, you know, the new head coach wanted to do now that he's in place, he can dictate some changes he would have liked to have seen offensively and defensively, but I don't expect to see a dramatic overhaul. I mean, they've been pretty consistent over the years and they've been consistent because they've done well and they've been able to execute what they like to run. So that's what we've operated on. And we're just going to have to adjust to things that we weren't prepared for or hadn't seen, but that's every Friday night. Most teams come into every game with some wrinkles based off of what they've seen in scouting reports and what they want to try and expose in their opponent. And they're in the same boat, though. I mean, they know over the years what we like to do and what we've done well, and that's what they're preparing for. So both teams are going to have to be able to adapt on the fly here in the opener. Looking forward to it. Gary Swenson with the Valley Tigers, another season in 2021. Coach, as always, enjoy the conversation, and I'm sure we'll be doing it a lot here throughout the fall. All right. Thanks for having me. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Obsessively, relentlessly. 
That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Guys, are you looking for an excuse to watch football all weekend long? Then schedule your vasectomy with the Urology Center of Iowa. The Urology Center of Iowa offers nitrous during your vasectomy, cutting-edge technology to help you relax during your procedure. Make the call to 515 400 3550. That's 400 3550 or online at iowauro.com. Vasectomies with the Urology Center of Iowa and tell them you heard it on KXNO. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. It's time for Friday Night High School Football in the Central Iowa Game of the Week on 96.9 The Bull. Catch all the action right here on The Bull or watch it now on CISN.TV. And now from the field, it's Trent Condon. Good evening and welcome to Valley High School as we get ready for tonight's Central Iowa Game of the Week. Trey Condon alongside Dar Danielson as we get ready for high school football here this evening. Dar, as we look at this one, the Valley Tigers, well, we know about them taking on the new school in the CIML, the Waukee Northwest Wolves. Yeah, I'm excited about it. It's uh, it's history because it's a, you know the first game of this new school. My dad played on the uh, first first football team of his uh, in school where I went to school you never forget that no matter what happens this season you're the class that got it started and you're the ones that did it now this is a little different this is a team that has experienced players on it it's a team that you know could make some noise here uh, it's just a matter of how long it takes them under a new coaching system and with new teammates to, to get it all together looking forward to it here tonight as we kick off the high school football season it's brought to you by our friends at Fairway. We're going to take a quick time out, come back, bring you the starting lineups and keys to the game. Waukee Northwest in West Des Moines Valley is our Central Iowa Game of the Week. We're back with more live from Valley Stadium here on 96.9 The Bull and video streaming on CISN TV. We're back with more here in a moment. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Niggett, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at RushOnBusiness.com. Let Rush Niggett help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Niggett, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. 
Holt Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm reminded of that every day as I see our fleet of vehicles in all shapes and sizes head out to help customers in need. We work hard to keep our vehicles clean and in good shape. Some are customized with great ideas and some Maybe not so much. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Name is important? Sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. All right, got it. Dart Danielson back with you as we get ready for kickoff. The Valley Tigers and Waukee Northwest here on CISN TV and our video stream with you on CISN TV. Dar, as we get ready for this one, it is certainly looking to be a, a fun one. We know Valley. We know they're going to run the football. It's a Gary Swenson coach team, one of the winningest coach in Iowa football history. Let's start with the Tigers. Anticipate more of the same this year? Well, last year was really a year that they weren't real happy with, with the overall record and then the way it ended with the COVID. It was, you know, uncharacteristic to be 4-4, four and four, and we know every, a lot of things went into that. So I think there's a little motivation for them, too, to say, hey, we didn't drop down. We're back. We're Valley. They've been used to being at the top, to challenging every year to get into the playoffs. And, you know, you said, Gary, he knows how to adjust. He knows how to bring in new players to uh, fill the spots for the ones that graduated. So, yeah, I see them getting back up to that level and being a contender again. You know, just, uh, well, it's, was it three years? No, two years ago. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking they didn't have, they, you know, they were in the state title game and, mm -hmm. and lost to Dowling. So, you know, it's not that far removed where they were in that title game. And that's where they want to be, always contending. I think they're going to get back to that again this year. Preseason number five from the Des Moines Register rankings. Waukee Northwest, it's unknown in a way, but it's a coaching staff that we know. You start with the former head coach at Waukee, Coach Carlson. He's coaching the linebackers now here at Northwest, and the new head coach there, he was a defensive coordinator at Waukee. So, though a different school, a lot of names that we know. Yeah, and, and then some players, I think there was like 60-some players that played on the Waukee squad last year, so you have some leadership in that, and, you know, this is a chance to, to make something new, as I said, to come out and say, nothing really to lose because you're new nobody knows what to expect out of you go out there play hard and, and you could maybe be a factor in this we're going to try to get to learn some of these new names on both sides of the football it's the opener here of the preseason a wider look around with of course we have our game up in Ankeny this evening where Waukee makes the way up to take the Hawks you can also catch that game on CISN TV but as you look around the state of course the headliner number one versus number two tonight Southeast Polk against Dowling Catholic that one should be a great one as well that should be a good one and we were just talking you know before we know that Dowling has a history of uh, a loss early doesn't mean anything because they, they play for the long haul. Southeast Polk, maybe a lot of the spotlight on them because, you know, they got there to the title last year. They have all those guys back. They have all the Division One prospects. So everybody's looking to them. And sometimes that can, that can get, you know, high school kids, you say, oh, they're used to it. They play club sports. They do all this. But that can, you know, that can be, be an effect on you. 
you know, looking around the area too. Ankeny, we talked about then. Centennial played so many young guys. Coach Pizzetti, I don't know if he's played ever that many sophomores in his career. We know how long Coach Pizzetti's been around. Yeah, speaking of experience. <laughs> <He's> right. <laughs> he takes it to another level. He's on the verge of, you know, tying the all-time wins record. So, yeah, he's got it there too, you know. Then you got yeah, Urbandale has some good athletes and a good, good team that could jump into the mix. So, yeah, and the thing is, this is going to be a grind. It's not that this opening game may not mean a lot for a lot of teams other than you, you see where you're at and what you got to improve on because – and. That has one been the, one of the mainstays for Valley and Dowling is you grind it out through the season. And the depth in that toward the end of the season is is what gets you there to the title game. Urbandale, good squad coming back this year. They lost a lot of talent, especially on the defensive end of the football. Johnston always building over there, had that big upset, trying to build on that over Dowling a year ago as they look for more as we look around here. Central Iowa here in week one of the Iowa high school football season. We're going to take a quick time out, come back. Starting lineups and kickoff, it's right around the corner. The Valley Tigers and Waukee Northwest. It's our Central Iowa game of the week. Stay right there. We'll be back with more here in a moment. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a Brick Gentry Law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Holtz Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm reminded of that every day as I see our fleet of vehicles in all shapes and sizes head out to help customers in need. We work hard to keep our vehicles clean and in good shape. Some are customized with great ideas and some maybe not so much. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Central Iowa Game of the Week on 96.9 The Bull is brought to you by Graphite Construction Group, the Urology Center of Iowa, and by the Norwalk Shop. Back with you high atop Valley Stadium. We get ready for the Valley Tigers and Waukee Northwest as the Wolves, for the first time as a varsity program, they take the field in their all-white get up here this evening. White helmets, white jerseys, and the white pants with the blue trim. It's weird seeing a Waukee squad without the purple and gold. Without the purple, a little bit of an Indianapolis Colts flair there to them, other than the wolf on the helmet. But yeah, it is, it is different. It's going to be take a little while to get used to that. Waukee Northwest, you know, but it you got it. Got used to it with Ankeny. We saw that, and then Ankeny Centennial after a while. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes them to be, you know, a contender within, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it be, football, basketball, and all the sports here in the central Iowa area. As they come out onto the field, Valley will make the slow trot out from their locker room. As always led out onto the field by Gary Swenson. And you look on the other side for Waukee Northwest, Corey Kapadich in his first season as a head coach, former defensive coordinator at Waukee High School. Certainly has experience, but the first time as a head coach. And you do wonder, though, this coaching staff was together at Waukee, a big part of them. You know, that first time out, even for coaches, got to be some butterflies yeah there is and then it's different when you're the main guy <laughs> you right. know? Yep. you're a coordinator and and now and you may have some new ideas and some new things as you see the tigers uh, are getting ready to come out of the locker room there i'm thinking that 
It's kind of cool to see the big student section across yeah. the way for uh, Waukee Northwest. They're out and they're anxious to uh, get their team started. Got a good uh, crowd on hand here this evening on a hot one. If you're joining us from outside the area, game time temperature here from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. We are currently sitting at a robust 90 degrees. Feels like 93, so a little bit of... <laughs> and it, when we came in about an hour ago, and pretty good there was a breeze, but that's kind of, it's kind of gone away. It seems a little warm up here now. And uh, as the sun sets, usually you see that wind die down. It is coming out from the south right now, going right to left across your radio dial and on your video screen for those with us on CISN. As the Tigers take the field in their traditional get-ups, the black jerseys, white pants with the orange trim and the white helmets, as squad four and five a season ago, they saw their season come to a close in the state quarterfinals, not on the field, with a forfeit. They had a COVID forfeit, not able to play their matchup against Dowling. And the disappointing thing I know for Valley, they were preseason number one last year. They were playing their best football at the end of the season. They felt like they had a chance against the Maroons. Yeah, and you had the whole thing with, you know, a new quarterback transferring in and then different players. And, yeah, then once they got it all together, and that was a, kind of the whole thing about last year, as teams started getting to play better, you know, then the season kind of came to an end on them. So it is good to get out here, and hopefully we have a full season without any issues. And, and uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting week to week to see which football team steps up here in this large class. Get the starting lineups here as we will have both teams make their way out for the coin flip in the middle of the field. The captains making their way out for Waukee including number 20, that's Tanner Spikesma, the outstanding running back, had a nice year a year ago. Also, Griffin Gamble, weak side linebacker, is out there. Ben Ryland, how about the big guy, wearing number nine this year. <laughs> Defensive tackle, wearing number nine, 6'4", 250. And also coming out is 59 offensive guard Javin Mueller, a junior for Waukee Northwest. The captains for Valley on the offensive side of the ball, senior tackle Hank Lewis, number 74, and the quarterback Mason Morrow defensively, it's Michael Dacey and Drew Henderson, number 26, the linebacker, and the only full-time returning starter for the Valley defense from a year ago. Just two players that really saw any playing time on that side of the football. Outside of the quarterback, Mason Morrow, remember a year ago, he was playing defense, and then when Jake Rubley was ruled ineligible, he he had a bounce over. over. Yeah, and he, he ended up having not too bad a year. He ended up throwing for about as many yards uh, as Rubley did once he, he got all said and done, 551 yards, three TDs, four interceptions. So, looks like flip. Valley's deferred. As we get ready for kickoff here. Or, excuse me, Waukee Northwest is deferred. Valley will receive. And they will be on the north end of the field where they'll receive as Waukee will go right to left across here. Waukee Northwest, the Wolves, the new high school, and uh, talking to Coach Pekatic early, early in the week, new high school, another second day of school, the internet went down. Never know what's going to happen, <laughs> even with the multi-billion dollar high school, always some bugs to iron out. I've driven by, I haven't been inside yet, but I saw a few pictures, and wow, you know, you we saw Johnston with their new stadium, new high school, and then now Waukee Northwest, and just the, the buildings, and... It could probably fit about 10 of my high schools in that entire building right. over there. A different level that they have. The enrollment numbers, though, different now with the two high schools in Waukee, Waukee Northwest, the bigger of the two, 1,260 students in their beds enrollment. That's 13th biggest in the state. Waukee High School now at 1171. That is 20th and the biggest school in the state again. Waukee took the crown a couple of years ago. It is back to West Des Moines Valley. Enrollment 21-41 tops in the state as we're ready to kick things off Waukee Northwest will get their varsity debut here teed up and ready to go with Andrew Cork the senior 5 foot 10 145 pound it pounder has it on the tee as the Wolves will kick it away here from their own 40 yard line back deep to receive for Valley Aiden Price a junior six foot outstanding athlete he's the backup quarterback but coach Swenson says they're going to get him involved in a couple of different ways he's back there with Danny Rankins Jr. the senior starting running back 5'9 180 pounds ball teed up there's the whistle we're ready to football here in 2021 ball in the air into the end zone that is a touchback 
that's how we start the 2021 high school football season. Trent Condon and Dar Danielson with you on 96.9 The Bull on the FM dial and our video stream on CISN TV. Interesting philosophy. A lot of times coaches like to start it out with your team on defense because you can kind of hit a little bit, get the jitters out. And, and so that's what Valley Northwest with taking and deferring has decided to do here. So it'll be on the Valley's offense coming out. Mason Morrill, he, he knows now he's the guy in charge. <laughs> he's the one that's going to make it run. Morrill, the quarterback, wears number four senior took over for Rubley a year ago as he works under center a single set look single receivers on each side of the formation as they go with double tight ends from the 20 yard line looking to the left side on the carry here's Rankin spins forward for a yard it'll be second down in nine is power football to start things out for the Tigers a pretty base defense here for Waukee Northwest the two linebackers right in the middle Offensive line in the starting lineup here for Valley. Starting with the tackles, Hank Lewis and Bradley Benz. The center is Jacob Moeller, and the two guards, Spencer George and Brevin Ayers. Second down to nine from the 21 yard line for Valley. Three wide receiver look here out of the shotgun. Here's Morrow, looks to the left side and throws. Complete up the sideline for a gain of five, five as he picked up Reed Schilb, the senior. With the catch, 6'2", 180 pounds. It'll be third down and four for Valley. Quick pitch and catch there. Not a whole lot to it. Stop route, and Morrow is able to get it out complete on his first throw. That's got to feel good. Yeah, just a quick throw out there. Get it out there. You've got a third and long now here, but a couple of positive plays to start out. From the 26-yard line, third and four. As Morrow rolls out to his right, looking up the field, here comes pressure, throws it up, looking for Raritan, just over his hands, incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and the punting unit will come out for Valley, and they'll be punting into a pretty significant breeze here, coming in from the south. Got a whistle and an official down, a little bit slow to get up, looked like he got knocked over there. One of the special teams players coming into the game for Valley knocked him over. <laughs> he was excited to get on the field and <laughs> ran into him out there. Looked like that was Jay Moore wearing number 11. As the punting unit will come out, it'll be Dawson Stein to punt it away. Six foot three junior. He was the punter a year ago for Valley. Averaged 37.2 yards per punt. He's got his work cut out for him here, though, into a stiff breeze on fourth down and four from the 26-yard line. Play clock rolling down to 13 as the special teams get set up for Valley. One man back deep to re receive for Wonky Northwest. Stein gets it away under pressure. End over end kick. Hits at the 43 yard line. Takes a Valley bounce inside the 30. In fact, they'll mark it right at the 30 yard line. Into the breeze. Good kick there for Dawson Stein. Yeah, 44 yard punt there and got a pretty good 15 yard bounce out of it as it he kicked away from the receiver and it bounced to the, his right and went out of bounds there. So a 44 yard punt and the first ever offensive possession here for Waukee Northwest. From the 30 yard line as the starting quarterback brings the team out onto the field, that's Carson Renkin who gets the start for Corey Kapadich's Waukee Northwest Wolves. They work out of the pistol, handoff left side, gains a couple as Spikesma able to fall forward. Had a hole there, but very quickly gobbled up by the Valley linebacking crew. Yeah, and Spikesma was uh, the relief guy a lot last year, and, but he got to play a, a lot of time, and he's a good quality back. This year he'll be the main go-to man. Lockheed Northwest going up-tempo, no huddle, two receivers right, had a tight end on that side as well as they work from the shotgun. Play action, rolling out. Breaking, looking for room, nothing out there. Now throws it up, he's got a man! Incomplete in and out of the hands of the receiver as Hayden Huntley went diving for that one. Just a little bit of separation near the sideline, couldn't haul it in. Jacob Allen all over the quarterback there, pressuring him. And he did a good job, though, of, of rolling and setting his feet and getting it downfield, but just out of the reach of uh, Hayden Huntley. Rinkin, his first varsity pass came right there as he gets the start forward Northwest. Now facing third down and eight. They're gonna keep it on the ground, running to the left side. Fighting a little bit of room, gonna be right near the sticks. It'll depend on the spot. Looks like the top side official will give the first down. Third and eight. He got eight yards and an inch of first down. 
And it's just enough and shows he can get it with his feet and that's been something that really keeps the defense off balance if you can get some yards running too. There's the handoff. Right back up the middle, nothing doing this time. Middle of defense there and the defense starts with Michael Dacey, the senior defensive lineman in first on the tackle. He was there. Jacob Owen also has a pick up a yard, second and nine for Waukee Northwest from their 41. Stout up the middle including for West Des Moines Valley how about this? Sophomore Ramez Naba, 6'2", 300 pounds, just a sophomore. Big guy in the middle clogging the lanes. They'll go back to the ground game again. Spikesma takes the handoff, trudges forward for about four. It'll be third and five from the 45. Now the third down opportunity coming up for Walk Northwest. Good pick up there, and, and that was a hallmark of Waukee. They like to run up the middle. Now Waukee Northwest with that coaching influence too. Looks like they're going to try to do that. And Spikes my good hard back up in the middle. And then if he can bust it outside, he's got some breakaway speed too. 9.05 left to play first quarter. No score. Valley and Northwest Waukee. Waukee with the football. Pressure comes. He gets the ball out. Complete to Spikes my first down into Valley territory. A pickup of 11 to the 44 yard line of the Tigers. Great job by Rankin standing in and delivering that pass. Yeah, I've stood there in, in a good route run right out into the flat there by for Spikesma. And he just, nobody picked him up defensively. That's something they'll, they'll have to adjust to there. Got 11 on the play into Valley Territory from the 44-yard line now. Fresh set of downs for Waukee Northwest. Two first downs already here in this opening series. The new squad, the Wolves. Milwaukee Northwest. Rankin shotgun snap will hand it off. Spikesma. A little bit of breathing room. Tried to spin out of a tackle, but it's brought down. Good tackle there. And the help coming in. New player out there for Valley. That's Caden Hutch at the linebacker spot. But they're getting positive yardage on the runs. And that's a key. You get just pick up a little positive yardage, keep running, and then that'll set up your passing game. Looking quickly again, Northwest. There's no huddle offense. We'll keep it ranking. Gets away from some pressure. Now looking to duck it and run. Nothing doing, though. Maybe got a yard out of it. And Jay Moore came in there and couldn't. Kind of got him around the hip, so he spun out of that. And Drew was Henderson able to... Credit, credited, yeah. excuse me, with the tackle. Henderson, the lone returning starter defensively from a year ago. Just over eight minutes to play. First quarter, scoreless. Waukee Northwest, though, on the move as they face a third down and seven from the Valley 41. Shotgun formation, trip receivers to the right side. We'll keep it with the quarterback. Big hole left side, first down and more, spinning to the 30 yard line, Rankin. Had a big, big wide area there. How about the offensive line for Waukee Northwest? Yeah, and there was where the fake just drew the defense in and he pulled it down and a good read. He had a big hole outside there off the tight end and off the tackle and good yardage. Offensive line, Ethan Olson, Luke Schumacher, Dominic Negro, Javin Mueller, and Cale Winter, the five starting offensive linemen for Waukee Northwest. Seven and a half to play first quarter on the shotgun again. Rankin hands it off, spikes him up the middle, bounces off to the right, picks up four, make it five as he trudges forward for an extra little jolt there and finding not a big amount of running room, but just enough to keep those just, chains moving. Yeah, and just, you know, you only need three yards of play by my mind. <laughs> right. Three and a half, three. Yep. And you'll, you keep getting first downs here. You see the handoff on the replay. And one thing Spikesman, too, he's, he reads the blocks very well, and they're tight. Second and four from the 25. This will be a run for Rankin. Quarterback draw up the middle. He's got a first down and more. All the way to the 15-yard line to pick up a 10 for Rankin. Young man is running the football incredibly well from his quarterback spot. Yeah, just a little fake to his right and then pulls it down and runs in this Valley defense. They can't be real aggressive right now because they're not exactly sure what's coming and that's the youth that we talked about. And a good pick up again on the run. Carson Rankin, a senior, six foot 205, playing physical for Northwest. And off spikes, breaks through the initial surge, gets inside the 10 to the seven yard line. Another big pickup there on first down. Give him nine, it'll be second and short from the six. 
Little bit of spike a little bit of Rankin, and that's really all Waukee Northwest has needed on this drive, keeping it on the ground for the most part. Yeah, because, I mean, the only pass they completed, too, was to Spikesma out of the backfield, wasn't it? And so right now, just keeping them off balance as they go a little more heavy formation. They go tight. Rankin sneaks. He's got the first down and not just gets the yard he needs. He brings it all the way to the three-yard line to pick up a three on the quarterback sneak. First and goal from the three-yard line. And how about this opening series for Waukee Northwest? And that just gives those offensive linemen, you know, that, that we're moving down the field that gives them that more pep to push. I'm blocking there. And Valley's got to find something here, a stop, to kind of slow the momentum a bit. Halfway through the first quarter. Double shift there from Waukee Northwest as they hand it left side. Big hole. Touchdown, Northwest. Waukee Northwest on their first ever varsity drive. They hit pay dirt. Six nothing Wolves. And just great blocking and great read of the blocks there. My Spikesman carries it right in. He had two TDs last year. And he's got the first one here, as you see on the replay, handoff and just, yeah, good seal block on the outside, and he cut right in there for the touchdown. Three-yard touchdown run for Tanner Spikesma. And Northwest is on the board. Extra point opportunity as Andrew Cork will put a foot to it. Snap back, hold down, kick on its way. Plenty of leg. It is good. Waukee Northwest 7. Valley 0, 534 left to go here in the opening quarter as we come back. High school football continues on 96.9 The Bull and video streaming on CISN. A business name is important, sure. DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRMandFord.com Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow gas fireplace insert from Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas at Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. A business name is important, sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com to the action with Trent Condon. Trent Condon, Dar Danielson back with you. Valley Stadium, 7-0 Waukee Northwest in their first ever drive at the varsity level. They punch it in. Spikesma with the three-yard touchdown run. And how about that start, Dar? 70-yard drive. They took it at the 30, drove it all the way down, running and passing there with Spikesma finishing it off. Carson Rankin, the quarterback, had several runs, too, on that, so... Set the tone early here. Andrew Cork. Now Cork's flips playing. back to the Valley offense. Cork with the touchback on the kickoff there. Had the wind at his back and be a start for Valley. Same place they did with their first drive from the 20 yard line. And we're not able to get a first down in that drive. So Mason Morrill bring the offense back out. New wide receiver group this good. Kate Grevin good is out there. Also, Reed Shilb, who had a catch on that opening series for the Tigers. And they'll spread things out a little bit. Three wide receiver look, though. Rairden is lined up in the slot, the tight end. And zone read look as they hand it off to Rankins. He looks to the right side, trying to fight his way forward. Stand on his feet, lost the ball. Waukee says they have it. Northwest is pointing that way, waiting for the official to come up with the call as they try to unpile a bunch and of members at the bottom. It's going to stay with Valley. With Valley, yeah. 
Boy, Danny Rankins Jr. put that one on the turf. Hank Lucas was on it, the big lineman there. Uh, of course, Wa Waukee Northwest, you see the replay. They were uh, signaling right away, we got it, but you got to wait till the guys in the stripes <laughs> come over, and they said no, it stays with Valley. Tigers will have it now, second down in seven after the fumble recovery at the 23-yard line as the clock ticks inside of five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Waukee Northwest 7, West Des Moines Valley 0. Mason Morrow with the offense. Two receivers to his left, one to the right. He's got Rankins Jr. with him in the backfield. Zone Reed going to keep it himself. Morrow able to stumble forward wow, for a couple, that. but that defensive front for Waukee Northwest, they were in pressure right away. Yep, they're they have that momentum too that the offensive line had the defensive line now they got a stop on the first drive and now they have a lead so they're out there aggressive ready to play so Valley let's see what they dial up here they need to need to get a first down it's key to not go three and out for the second straight drive here third down and six from the 24 yard line two receivers left one right out of the shotgun, Mason Morrow takes the snap. Looks out to his left side, throws it complete. Short of the first down, sticks though. It'll be fourth down and two. Ran a stop route, but stopped before the sticks. Yeah, you needed he needed two more yards there. You, you, you can't stop early, because it was a quick throw. If he goes out a little deeper and stops, maybe you get that first down, or you break free, but a good sure tackle there. Now fourth and one here. It looks like they're going to send out the punter. They aren't going to uh, tempt it early on in the game. It's early, just down seven, nothing here. Dawson Stein back out to punt for the Tigers. Got away a beauty in his first opportunity. The part punter a year ago will take both the duties this year, both kicking and punting for Valley this season. 3-10 to play. Tigers line up on fourth and one in punt formation. For the snap, we have a whistle. Didn't see the play clock if it was that, or if there was movement. Looked like the official came from way back, and that's normally yep, a delay. delay game. And that's what it is, so it'll be a five yard penalty. Move it back, still fourth down, now make it fourth and six from the 24 yard line. And well, if there was any chicanery up there, any kind of fake, <laughs> that's called off now, fourth off, and yeah. six. Yeah, he takes that out of the playbook. Back deep is uh, Tristan Grubb for Waukee Northwest. Grubb, five foot nine, defensive back, 65 as Stein. It's another end over end punt this time. Fair catch called for, bobbled, but comes right back into the hand of Tristan Grubb. So he'll have it at about the 47 yard line is where he recovered the muff punt. They'll in fact bring it back though to where the fair catch was called and first contact was made. It'll be back to the 43-yard line. That'll be the second spot here for Waukee Northwest in their second drive. The first one, 70 yards for a touchdown. A long extended drive, and now that Valley defense right back out on the field. Another three and out. And they've got what wind there is to their back right now, although they didn't pass a lot. They were able to keep it mainly on the ground there, the one swing pass that was completed. One or two passes on that first drive. From the shotgun, they will hand it off. Looking to Spikesman, tries to bounce it outside, breaks a tackle, spins through another, fights forward for a gain of five. Tanner Spikesma, touchdown in the first drive, and he is running hard. He's a young man a year ago. Didn't see a ton of carries, but when he did, Dar, I was always so impressed by him. Yeah, he came in, he had Alexander Lindquist, the senior, that he was behind, and when Lindquist was, he gave him a breather, and then Lindquist got hurt a few games, he came in, and he always runs hard, he can run up the middle, he can break it outside, just a good all-purpose back. 166 yards a year ago on the ground for Waukee High, now at Northwest Rankin, on the zone, re keeps it himself, he is crunched right near the first down marker, solid tackle, coming in and helped by Cade Lewinstra. It'll be just short of the first down. Marker, we'll call it third down and two as they move into Valley territory to the 49. Rankin lost his helmet, so he's going to have to go out. And the new quarterback for that a comes play. in. Looks like that is Sam Johnson, a sophomore. He is listed as a wide receiver. I almost wonder if this is more kind of a wildcat type of look. Yeah, or just, you know, it's third and two, so maybe hand off to Spikesma. On the shotgun. Johnson 
Gonna keep it himself up the middle. Nearly lost the ball for a moment. Looks like he's gonna be just shy of the first down. Minute 50 to go. Wind at their back. Decision time now. First big decision now for head coach Corey Kapadic. Yeah, because they didn't have their starting guy in there. And let's see. He, he just got, you're right, he just about got that poked away. We'll see what they do. Rink had coming back in here, so maybe they're going to go for it early. Play clock down to 17 as they look over at the sidelines. Rank in the quarterback makes the look over. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. Let's see if they try to call the defense off here. Valley showing pressure with the linebackers all up the gaps. We look back over at the sidelines. Play clock down and there's the flag. It'll be a delay of games. You're right, Dar. They tried to draw him off there. Went with the hard count and Valley didn't fight. Yeah, they... I think if they were able to run out there quicker and line up, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. that's a possibility. But they came out and just sat and credit. I mean, Valley's defense is anxious to make something happen, but credit them for not jumping here. They, they held their ground, and it gives the punter a little more room to kick, too. With the wind at the back, back out to punt. The kicker, who we've seen a couple of times tonight, Andrew Cork, will also handle the punting duties. Two touchbacks to his credit and an extra point. Now we'll try to do it with the punt game. Two receivers back deep for Valley, including Aiden Price. Wearing number five, he's back on the left side of the punt return. High snap over the head of the putter. He's going to try to kick it out of the back of the end zone. Is it going to get there? It does. Just rolls through for a safety. Didn't want to give Valley the short field. He kicked it from the 20-yard line, though, and rolled it all the way through the back of the end zone for a safety. I don't know if you're better off to pick it up and try to run. You do give him the short field, but you give him the automatic two here plus the penalty. It'll be an illegal kick, and we'll see as the ref crew is going to put things together. Valley coaches, they're signaling safety. That's what I believed it was. I. Very, I guess I could be wrong on that. Though. I think it is when you kick it out the back, mm -hmm. but there's also that penalty, and I'm not sure. I think that's for an illegal kick because he kicked it off the ground, right, which but, you can't do. And I don't know then if they enforce that on the free kick. Good call. Half the distance, or I'm a little rusty yet on that rule. <laughs> we'll sort all that out. Hey, it's week one. Never know what you're going to see. We've seen a safety 7-2. Waukee Northwest lead cut to five. As the players make their way over to the sideline. So two points on the board. Valley's first score of the year is a safety. If you had that in your bingo squares, Dar. <laughs> well, it all counts here. And then they get the ball back, too. Well, definitely so, a big opportunity for them, Dar. Yeah, it is. It's a get chance Get that short now. field, probably. That high snap. Um, you know, and those are some of the things you see sometimes early in games. But... Uh, on Andrew Cork, now we see some small guys out there, but at the 5A level now of high school football, 5'10", 145, you could tell he wanted nothing to do with somebody trying to bring him down. Exactly, yeah. He was getting rid of that ball any way possible. He kicked it off the ground after that high snap as he was retreating back to their own end zone and kicked it out of the back of it for the safety. 7-2, 59 seconds left in an entertaining first quarter here from West so, Des Moines Valley. So I didn't see then. Did they decline the penalty? I believe no. They accepted the penalty. Accept penalty. So, so they'll move it back. The free kick at the high school levels from the 20? I thought it was a 20, yeah. Okay, so must have declined the penalty, took the safety. Safety. And that's the two points on the board. They'll kick it off from the 20-yard line, and now Cork will, won't have to worry about any pressure here as he's got no. it up on a tee. 59 seconds, here's the kick with the wind at his back. High end over end kick, grabbed at the 21 yard line. Ball comes loose, right back into the hands though of the returner to the 40. Still on his feet, dropped at the 41 yard line. A bobble, it bounces right back up into his hands. A good return for Price, Aiden Price, the junior quarterback also playing special teams. And now Valley with their best field position of the night. Yeah, good field position. They have points on the board, so a potentially you know, a nine-point turnaround here. Now things very quickly changed after a couple of three and outs for Valley. Now the offense will get an opportunity as the defense helps them out with points on the board. Waukee Northwest 7, 
Valley 2 in our Central Iowa Game of the Week presented in part by Elite Eye Care on University Avenue in West Des Moines. From the shotgun, they'll hand it off left side, cutting back, big hole. The midfield, 45, breaks the tackle to the 43-yard line. A pickup of 17. Solid run there earlier. Danny Rankins Jr. put it on the turf, was pulled out of the game. He's back in and making a bench for it there. You feel the momentum shift here? Yes. <laughs> Flipped right over Valley. A little confidence now after that safety. They only didn't get a save for the punter there. He he was decisive. I saw a couple games last year where the punter kind of messed around and the defense came in and picked it up and scored the six, but at least he made the decision right away. We'll see what happens if it ends up in a score. Valley in Waukee territory for the first time from the 41-yard line. Shotgun handoff as they go back to Rankins. He bounces outside. He cuts back to the left. Through a tackle to the 35. Through another tackle to the 34. Strong run. Danny Rankins Jr. Not a huge guy by any means. 5'9", 180. He's running hard for the Tigers. Yep, and Adam Gardner, the middle linebacker, lost his helmet out there. And all that. Rankins, after those two strong runs, he's going to get a breather on the sidelines. Yeah, he just slipped right through, and then he kind of got bent back over on the tackle, but he's starting to heat it up, too. Final seconds will tick off, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Your score, Waukee Northwest 7, Valley 2. Tigers on the move when we come back. You're listening to high school football on CISN.TV and our audio call on the radio on 96.9 The Bulls. Stay right there. We're back with more in a moment. Are you missing out on life's activities? D. Armand Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the D. Armand difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new D. Armand Ford Indianola where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DeArmon Ford Indianola. DeArmonFord.com Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore. 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. A business name is important, sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. The 7-0 lead early over Waukee High. First down, a second down run as they hand it off right side. Another big hole to the 25 and forward for a gain of 10. New running back in the game, that's Dion Hutch. 5'7", scat back, look quick there as he gets the first down. Scat is the word. He, he moved quickly when he saw where he wanted to go and quickly up the field there. First down run to the 24-yard line. The First sustained drive we've seen here this evening for the Valley offense as they went three and out in their first two possessions. They trail it by five from the 24-yard line in Northwest. They'll hand it Rankins in the middle, nothing there. Gobbled up right away in defensively for Northwest. Adam Gardner, the middle linebacker, came shooting through and hit him right at the line. Yeah, just stacked him right up before he could get any movement. You don't want to, once they, they get by that defensive line, that first level, they really have the speed and movement to turn it into a long game, but that time they shut it down quickly at the line of scrimmage. Rankins Jr. picked up a yard, second and nine from the 23-4 Valley in Waukee Northwest Territory. From the shotgun, Mason Morrow, the quarterback. Two receivers to his left, he's looking that way. Here comes pressure, throws it out to the flat. Complete, ball comes out, but out of bounds. A hard hit on the sidelines there. Coming up from his cash position, Harry Linen. Laid a stick there, the sophomore. Showed a little bit of buzz for Northwest. Yeah. Eli Moses on the blitz, comes right up the middle, and he's still able to get the pass out there. 
ball went backwards, went out of bounds at the 26-yard line. So instead of a gain, it'll be a loss of three on the play. That'll make it third down and 11. Valley now playing, though, with the wind at their back here in the second quarter. Play clock down to 10 as they break the huddle. Tigers got to hurry. Big, big play here for them to, if they can get a stop for the Northwest defense. Morrow takes the shotgun. Here comes pressure. They set up a screen. It's complete to Rankin. Can't break three. Ball came loose again this time. I think they whistled it down. I yeah, thought he's I pointing heard a down. He's saying down. The linesman over here is saying he was down, but he's going to be short. Yeah, just picked up four. They needed 11. So it'll be fourth and long here from the 22 yard line. And, and you're, you know, you're, it's too close for a punt, probably yeah. too far for a field goal. So maybe you dial up something and try to go with it here offensively. Well, here comes Dawson Stein, the kicker. He was the punter a year ago, also doing punting duties this season. And looks like he's going to line up. Well spotted at the 29. It'll be a 39 yard field goal from the left hash for junior six foot three Dawson Stein with the wind at his back. Hold down, kick on its way, plenty of leg, and he pounds Got it. it. Wow. 39 yard field goal, no problem at all for Dawson Stein. Three run home run makes it 7 5, Dar. We got a baseball score here early. <laughs> A wild opener, huh? <laughs> no doubt about it. We'll come back here in a minute. Ten minutes to play second quarter. Northwest 7, Valley 5. Back with more on CISN. And also... Do you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise? There's a lawyer right here in central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a brick gentry law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with brick gentry law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Trent Condon here for the Urology Center of Iowa. Now is your chance to sit on the couch guilt-free all weekend long watching football while you heal after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. The doctors there perform my procedure in less than a half hour. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400-3550 and online at iowauro.com. A guilt-free football watching weekend after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. Glad to have you aboard with us here this evening, our game of the week. It is number five, West Des Moines Valley. Now five consecutive points. Still trail 7-5, though, to Waukee Northwest. Interesting ball game developing in front of us, Dar. Yeah, and for Northwest, not the best out. The best outcome would have been to stop them on fourth down, but they give up the field goal. They didn't give up the touchdown after that high snap, and they kicked the punt out of the end zone for the safety. So it's shaping up to be a good one right now. Stein will kick it off high, kick into the middle of the field. That'll reach the goal line into the end zone, an automatic touchback. If you're reacquainting yourself with the high school rules, automatic touchback once it goes past the goal line, no chance of a return and cuts down on those kickoff returns. You so see so many injuries though. Dar certainly understand why you see that. Yeah, and the high school's done that for forever, you know, it, and um, I'd still like to see the kickoff, but that's a good rule there for high school especially because then everybody doesn't get that momentum coming yeah. down and, and now you see Waukee Northwest starting on their 20. At least this is the worst starting position that they've had so far here tonight. They lead it by two, seven, five. Ten minutes to play in the second quarter as they hand to Spikes on left side. Breaks the tackle, 25-30, bounced out of bounds. First down run to the 32. Tanner Spikes again continues his hot start. Running the ball hard this time instead of up the middle. Bounces it outside. Well, he's saying, hey, Danny Rankins, I can uh, run a little bit too here, so... Yeah, it's good, good job of that stiff arm to get around the end there as they didn't contain, and he runs to the boundary. Had that stiff arm of Jake and Owen, who's had a nice start to it. Takes it back up the middle. Not this time, though. He has stood up after a short gain. Middle of the defense stopped there for the Tigers. Yeah, just a good way to plug that hole up. We'll give him two. Second down and eight with the clock in. 9.35 left to go in the second quarter. Waukee with the football, Waukee Northwest, the Wolves. We haven't, we haven't seen any big negative offensive plays here other than that, well, that was a, you know, the snap and the punt, mm -hmm. but really no negative offensive plays from either team yet. 
Rolling out to the right, Rankin's gonna keep it himself. A designed run for the quarterback. He's got a first down again as he is hogtied down at the 45 yard line. Valley defender slow to get up off the field as that is Derek Gwynn. Yeah, that was close to a horse collar there was, on the tackle. Ripped down as we see the replay here on CISN. Yeah, had him from behind. Didn't have it up near the, underneath the collar though. Well, and that's why no horse Horse collar call. Got up on the pads, but. First and 10 as we go inside. Nine minutes left before halftime from the 45 yard line. Tight formation. Rankin will keep it on the zone read. He goes to the left and he picks up a couple. On the tackle for Valley, Cade Lundstra is there. Just positive momentum. One thing I heard from about Northwest, there were some question marks about the offensive line, but boy, they've answered them early here against this Valley D. Yeah, they had some early success on that first drive, and um, you know, not big holes, but you got spikes by and and Rankin, and they could need just a little hole to get into. That's part of the key, I think. Second down and seven from Waukee Northwest. 48 play action pass. They're going to take a shot. Wide open up the field. This is going to be a Waukee Northwest Aiden touchdown. Hundley. Yeah. Hundley all alone. The play action full the Tiger defense. 52 yard touchdown strike. 13 5 with the extra point pending. You know, Hundley didn't get any touchdowns last year. He was kind of a role player. He got a lot of key catches. But here. He just gets outside, gets loose. He just was a straight streak down the sideline, and nobody picked him up. Wide open points his way as he makes it into the end zone. And this all Tristan, I uh, checked that Andrew Cork will come in to attempt the PAT. And what a response from Waukee Northwest after giving up five straight points on the safety and the field goal. They come roaring back with the touchdown. Extra point on its way, and that is through. 14-5, Waukee Northwest with the lead over Valley. Back with more high school football here in a moment on CISN TV in 96.9, The Bull. Name is important? Sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Free football watching weekend after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. The Central Iowa Game of the Week on 96.9 The Bull is brought to you by Rush Nigged of Brick Gentry Law PC, the Rookie Sports Cards, Cinerama of Urbandale, and by Lincoln Savings Bank. Truck out of Dark Danielson back with you. Glad to have you aboard this evening as a quick kick here, a high one into the win will be all the way up to the 17 yard line and it's brought back to the 29 good return and decent field position here for the tigers but quick strike Waukee northwest hits it with the pass for the first time the touchdown throw and that was a beauty sometimes those wide open ones can be a little bit harder <laughs> yeah not at all there for carson rankin so that's a 70 yard drive and an 80 yard drive for Waukee northwest here for their two scores now valley has a chance here. I won't say they were starting because they started back at the 20, but they weren't able to cash in that um, short field after the botched punt and the kick, but we'll see now if they can get their offense on a sustained drive and get it into the end zone here. Last one, they moved it all the way into deep into Waukee Northwest territory after a couple three and outs. See if they can build on that momentum as they go with the pass out to the right, a little jet sweep, trying to get the edge, get the corner. Does for about a gain of seven before being knocked out of bounds. And that was Aiden Price talked about him. 
He's the backup quarterback, but Coach Sweats had told me, Dar, he is just such an athlete. He's so important what they do. They knew they had to find a way to get him on the field. And that's what the good coaches do. They have these kids. They know they have speed. And they want to get him in the game instead of just on the sidelines. Put him in there. Find a play for him. And there, that kind of little pitch handoff pass in the middle. And he gets a good gain on first down. Price, it will be a reception on that play as it was a shovel pass, if you will, forward as he was coming across in motion from the wide receiver position. Two receivers left and a single tight end to the right. Timeout's going to be called. Coach Swenson wants to talk it over with his Valley Tigers. 7.56 left to go, second quarter. Waukee Northwest 14, Valley 5. Back in a minute with more high school football on 96.9 The Bull on video streaming CISN TV. Yes, you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise. There's a lawyer right here in central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a brick gentry law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with brick gentry law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Trent Condon here for the Urology Center of Iowa. Now's your chance to sit on the couch guilt-free all weekend long watching football while you heal after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. The doctors there perform my procedure in less than a half hour. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400-3550 and online at iowauro.com. Give us a call, 225-8866. Back to the high school football and the Central Iowa Game of the Week on 96.9 The Bull. As we come back here to Valley Stadium, movement up front against the Tigers. And the procedure penalty will move them back five yards from second and four, make it second down and nine as they move the football back to the 30-yard line. And just a little bit of positive momentum gets brought back. They'll break the huddle, though, very quickly. Tigers... Moving right to left across your radio dial and on your screen here with us on CISN TV. The bit price in motion again, hand it to Rankins. Hole in the middle, he's able to get those five yards back that they just lost on the penalty. It'll be third down and four. That's something we haven't seen early on those. Sometimes you see that line's jumping off uh, defensively or offensively first game, but right up until there, the first penalty for that kind of move. We have two delay a game penalties, so really just three flags on the field other than the one for the kick <laughs> that they declined. But good good third down position, though, for Valley. From their 35-yard line with 7.20 left in the second quarter. Morrow out of the shotgun. Sets up a designed run. Tries to get to the right. Here comes a flag. He's right at the first down marker. Looks like he has the first down, but a flag came in. Normally the spot of an offensive holding. Yeah, right into the middle of that line. That's likely what it's going to be. And that's what the preliminary call is. It'll be a holding penalty against Valley. So instead of a first down at the 39-yard line, they're going to move this thing back, and it'll be third and long for the Tigers. And that's something that drive Coach Swenson and that offensive staff crazy. Got yeah, the play design, and then a holding brings it back. I didn't really see on the replay there anything that looked too egregious, but... Light came out quickly, too. It wasn't yeah, one of those it did. long developing plays. It uh -huh. was out. Right in the middle of that bunch of linemen. We'll move it back, make it third and 14 for Valley as they'll place the football at the 25-yard line. Mason Morrow got the wind at his back here. We'll see if he wants to try to take a shot. Got a receiver, Chase Hutchinson, lined up on the right side. Two receivers left, including his tight end, Rared, who's lined up in the slot. Morrow back to pass. Pressure comes, throws across the middle. Dangerous, incomplete. Nearly picked off as pressure was coming from all over the place from Northwest. I think he was looking for Rared, and he had Rared in crossing there, and we haven't heard from Rared yet tonight. He's that big target out there if they can get it to him, but just no way to come through on that pass. And uh, as he was hammered by... Uh, that was Moses again. Moses, yep. Eli Moses, he's been all over the place defensively for Northwest and helps with the pressure there to force the fourth down. Another punt here 
coming for Valley and Dawson Stein. Dawson Stein, Stein puts the right, 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 right foot to it, a spiraling punt grabbed at the 40 yard line for the 45 and gobbled up right there as Tristan Grubb gets six on the return. Good field position again for Waukee Northwest and they try to build on what they've done a couple of their possessions here in the first half. Yeah, this is going to be their best starting field position here tonight. But they've gone 70 and they've gone 80 yards on their two scoring drives, so we'll see. Valley would like to put up a defensive stand here before the first half ends and get the ball back. They've got to try to get their offense figured out a little bit here, and penalties, the two penalties didn't hurt them, help them on that last drive. 6.34 left in the second quarter. Northwest 14, Valley 5. Continue to try to catch myself every time I say Waukee, remembering there's now two. And off left side, now keeping it himself. Check that, that was Rankin, and he's able to stumble and bumble forward for a gain of four. Well, I think you can do that as long as you're not playing each other. Right, right. <laughs> you know? And that will not be the case here the first two years. Remember the build-up eight years ago for Ankeny versus Ankeny Yankee Centennial. Centennial, yeah. And just what a big deal it was. I'm very surprising, and I've heard from a lot of people here last couple of weeks kind of looking at the schedule saying, wait, we don't when's play? Waukee yeah. versus Waukee Northwest? Not on the schedule, though, for the, at least these first two years. Six minutes to play, second down and six for Northwest from midfield. Rankin, he's going to keep it himself up the middle. He's got a first down and more to the 40-yard line. Falls to the 38th game of 12. And again, the quarterback right up the gut. Carson Rankin running the ball well. Man, he got through that first line, and he's just looking, and there's still a lane, and he's still looking as he is seeing the replay here. He cuts through, looks around, and then finally he comes over. He, I, th I don't think he could hardly believe that he went 10 yards before anybody really touched him there. To the Valley 38, first down and 10. 5.36 left to go in the second quarter. Another good drive here for Waukee Northwest. They lead it 14 to 5 over the Valley Tigers. And in motion, they will keep it with spikes them up the middle. Get at the line and falls forward for a yard. Good work that time up front. From the Valley defense in on the tackle, it was Ryan Cunin. And again, they're getting positive yardage on all their first downs. They're getting, you know, there it's only two, but they've gotten three and four yards on first down, and that sets you up nicely when you don't get behind the chains early on. Take a long time now looking for the play over there. Play clock down to 15. Wonky Northwest, though, on no huddle here. They're up pretty much all the evening. High Temple offense. They lead it 14 to 5. He ended up the football off again, gobbled up again, this time for a loss. Defensive pressure and another tackle for Drew Henderson. Had 44 tackles and four sacks a year ago. He's looking to build on that now in the senior season. Yeah, he was the second leading tackler on that squad last year. It'll be third down and nine after the loss of a yard as the Tick inside a 420 left to play in the second quarter from the 37 yard line. Another long look at the sideline. Play clock down to 10, so we got the play in. Now Northwest ready to go. Third and nine. Another shotgun rank. Puts a man in motion. Out of a tight formation. Rolls to his left. Looking to throw. He's got a man out there. Throws it wide into the lead. As he was trying to get the football out to Sam Johnson. It'll be fourth down from the 37. Now another decision here. What do you do on fourth and nine? Yeah, I, I think you punt it probably. You're not far enough. No chance at a field goal into the yeah, win here. Yeah. You're talking about a 56-yarder. Because, I mean, you can give them, you give them pretty good field position. If you don't make it, they're going to have, you know. But they're keeping the offense out there, so what do I know? <laughs> Carson Rankin out there with the rest of the offense. Four minutes to go in the second. Shotgun snap rolls to his left. Here's a throw across the middle. Complete for the first down. A bullet on the crossing route to Hayden, Hayden Hundley. Hundley. Well, and one thing about Hundley, you get it to him, he's going to catch it. You know that, but that was a, a rocket pass right in there where it had to be. We've seen the replay here now on the video part of it. And just comes right across in front of the defender and makes the play going down to keep the drive alive. And they're also eating up the clock here, so... Keep it out of Valley's hands here before the 
half, possibly score, and then also leave them a little time left. First and 10 from the 26. Bobbled snap as it came back wild. Rankin just going to put a knee to it. Saw four Tigers in his face at the heck of that. <laughs> yeah, and he, he really didn't have anywhere to, like, throw it or anything because he probably would have drawn a penalty on that. But smart play. Sometimes it's better to – he didn't like I say. That's probably the first offensive – loss play that we've had for Waukee Northwest here tonight. Officially a loss of eight. Second and 18 back to the 34-yard line. Rankin, though, hasn't thrown it a ton, but when he has, he's been impressive with that throw. He had the big touchdown throw, a 52-yarder, and that fourth down completion a moment ago. Then the shotgun spikes, takes the handoff. He trudges forward to the 29-yard line. Picks up six there and makes it at least third and manageable now for Waukee Northwest. Yeah, now you want to get maybe at least half of that and you put yourself in good field goal position if you can't get the first down. From the 30-yard line. And, and you've still got the clock ticking down here. It's going to be around two minutes when you snap the ball. And even if you don't get the 14, if you can get half of that, maybe yeah. it gives you a chance at a field goal. It'll be about a 40-yarder into the wind and we've seen Cork's got a pretty decent leg to him. Long look over here at the sidelines. Looks like maybe they're going to use a timeout. timeout. Yeah, they got their timeouts and left three of them so might as well take Two, it. Two oh three left to go. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. Third and 14 when we come back for Waukee Northwest. High school football continues here in a moment. Name is important. Sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. In Graphite Construction Group. See why at Graphite GRP. Back to high school football on 96.9 The Bull. Trent Condon and Dar Danielson back with you. Glad to have you with us. 2.03 left to go in the second quarter. Waukee Northwest with a nine point lead. Third and 14. Rankin hit in the backfield and he is dropped. It'll be a sack for the Valley defense. Good penetration and Tate Larson. We'll get the sack. And he did a good job of the fighting off the blocker, getting the hand out there. And, and you'll see here on the replay, he pulls down the quarterback and just enough to trip him up. And now you're in that kind of no man's land out here. Mm -hmm. It'll be fourth and 16. You're from the 32. Hunt doesn't do a whole lot unless you pin him inside the 10-yard line. No, and Valley stopped the clock, so they have some time left here. They took a timeout. Minute 52 left. Valley wants another opportunity, and they know to start the second half, Waukee Northwest is going to get the football. So that's also a big piece of this also, Dar, is understanding yeah, you know, where what's, you're at. what's the second half going to be. Defense has done a good job. Gave up a big play on a 52-yard touchdown pass. The other, a long sustained drive for Waukee in between. Valley has been tight at times tonight. They got fourth and 16. Rankin, though, fourth and nine. Here earlier this drive, he delivered a bullet, so he's going to be looking to go to the air again. But he hasn't had much time to pass the last couple times he's dropped back there. A credit to the Valley guys up front there. They've, they've been able to get in on him and uh, not allow him much time at all to get the ball out of there. 155 on the clock. It's fourth and 16 from the 32. Northwest, the Wolves need to get to the 16 of Valley, and we got more whistles. We got another timeout. We'll take it with them. Back in 30 seconds when we come back. Fourth and 16. You're listening to high school football on 96.9 The Bowl and video streaming on CISN TV.
site here, freshman school just up to our east a little bit further in West Des Moines. Fourth and 16, and they're going to try for the long field goal. Wind has died down here. This is going to be a 49-yard field goal attempt for Waukee Northwest. They spotted at the 39, kick on its way. It is short. Hits in the middle of the end zone. No good on the field goal attempt. And that's just like a putt there to bring it out to the 20 yard line. Yeah, in high school, there's nothing hurt with that. As long as you block it and don't let them block it and take it the other way, it comes back out to the 20. Early on gives you a chance to see what your kicker has there, you know. But so not a bad play because if you punt it, it's likely going to go in the end zone anyway. And you gain maybe 10 yards on the exchange of that there we'll see what valley with 150 to play here if they can uh mount a drive before the end of the half got the wind at their back 150 to go and they do have a timeout also to their credit Makes have they the completed the pass yet valley morrow's had a couple one on a screen play screen, yeah one. just short ones but no long ones yet yeah, yeah nothing up the field yet and that Maybe something to do with the new wide receiver group. They lost a couple really mm -hmm. talented wide receivers from a year ago. Starters Kate Grevengood and Reed Schild as they'll throw it complete to Grevengood. His first catch, he breaks the tackle. First down to the 35, still on his feet. He's fighting forward again on 19. Kate Grevengood making his first catch of the year. A big yeah, one. and he had... Um he had inside of him, they had um, Reardon, and Reardon pulled through there, and then they just threw it out to him in the flat. Great execution you see here on the replay. Yeah. And he ducked under and kept going. Chains were a little late getting set there. They gave extra time to get set up. They'll set up quarterback draw. Here's Morrow to the 45, and he'll be stood up there. So the clock will continue to run. They want to hurry. They only have one timeout. They want to keep in their back pocket. They got to hurry from their 45 as we go to 115 left here in the second quarter. Looking back over at the sideline. No huddle for Valley, but they got to hurry. They come away. Reared and lined up to the right along with Grevin Good. Single receiver left. That's Reed Schild. Morrow from the gun. Shotgun snap. Throws it. It is complete for the first down. Reed Chill with this second catch and a late flag comes in. That one came in very late. You almost wonder if it could have been a possible face mask or something like that. It's a first down for Valley to the Waukee Northwest 45 as we await the call from the officials on the field. Long look over there. Face mask, sir, Todd. Mm -hmm. It is a face mask, so that'll be an additional gain on the play. And all of a sudden, Valley's in business. 57 seconds to go. They'll walk it forward from the 44-yard line all the way to the 29 on the 15-yard penalty. And absolutely in field goal position at the very least now for Stein. Yeah, he kicked a 39-yarder. The first one he kicked was a 39-yarder. So they're getting close to his range here. Clock rolls though as they set the football. Inside of 45 seconds to go. Morrow, pressure comes, gets it out. It's complete, knocked out of bounds as they got it out to the H-back. That's Bryce Anderson with his first catch. Out of bounds to the 25, a gain of four. Second and six for the Tigers with 41 seconds left. Quick pitch and catch, positive momentum and Morrow. And you stop the clock by getting out of bounds. What more could you ask for there? Morrow, his confidence starting to build here as the second half has progressed. Monkey Northwest leading Valley by nine, but the Tigers on the move. They'll throw it out to the flat, breaking the tackle as Rankins to the 20, 15. He's got a first down. That'll stop the clock with 33 seconds left. He is shifty out there, Danny Rankins Jr. He's, he's low to the ground. They're going high on him, too, if you watch the replay here. He just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he juked him right out of his shorts there, didn't he? From the 14, Morrow with the snap. Looks to the middle of the field. Now back up to the corner. Throws it high. It is incomplete. Had two receivers out there. Bryce Anderson, he jumped up for it, but there was a receiver behind him. It was weird, wasn't Reardon, it? Reardon, yeah. yeah. And it was low for him, kind of in between yeah. both the receivers. For Reardon size, but he kind of had to turn and fling it. If you get it up a little higher, Reardon's got the size to pull it down, but they, this is the spot where you want to look for him, the big 
big guy out there. Reardon at 6'7", uh, 230, the tight end, but really he plays out in that slot. And Let's see if they try to go to him again. 20 seconds left here in the half. Valley still at the timeout from the 14. Morrow sets up a screen, gets it to Rankin Jr. To the 10, to the 8. He's got a bunch of defenders on him, finally brought down at the 6. A flag came in in the middle of the field. You also wonder if that might have been an ineligible man up the field there on the screen play. Yeah. Offensive lineman too far forward before it was complete. Too far. You get, what is it, three yards from line of scrimmage? And you get that kind of zone in the middle where you can come forward out right at the line of scrimmage, and it is an eligible man down the field. It, it took a long, long time to set up, and usually when it takes that long, the defense is there. As the... Uh, Flight comes in against Bradley Benz, the tackle, 6'5", 295. So what looked to be a great game. There's down to 10 seconds left. And they're going to walk it back from the 14. Well, you got a timeout. You may have a chance to swing it once to the end zone, but you'd have to do it quick. Rayardin is lined up single to the left, 6'7". As the clock starts, they got to hurry, get this thing off. Down to five. This might be their last play of the half. To the end zone, looking for Raritan over his head, out of bounds, and the half is complete. Clock I think they didn't realize that it was a penalty, so the clock starts since it's sad there. They, they could have used that timeout, but they, you know, you forget about that. Through the jump ball, like the play call there with the 6 7 tight end, Eli Raritan, but no time left on the clock for a field goal attempt, and that's how we will end the first half. Waukee Northwest 14, West Des Moines Valley 5 at our Central Iowa Game of the Week. Glad to have you with us on CISN TV and the radio call here this evening and all season long on 96.9 The Bull. We'll take a timeout, come back with the halftime show. It is brought to you by the Urology Center of Iowa when we come back here in a moment. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle regardless of make, model, condition, or value. With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. At Holt Plumbing and Heating, our team is clean cut, professionally dressed, and always training to be the best. We have families too, and we understand that nothing is more important than keeping them safe and comfortable. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. A high quality job with a smile and a little extra wow. I would like to personally invite you to experience Holt Plumbing and Heating and find out why for over 70 years, families all over central Iowa say, let Holt handle that. SportsCards.com, the rookie, Central Iowa's leader in sports cards. The Central Iowa Game of the Week halftime show on 96.9 The Bull is brought to you by the Urology Center of Iowa. Here's Trent Condon. Welcome back once again here as we join you high atop the field from Valley Stadium. I'm Trent Condon, my partner Dar Danielson. Thanks for joining us here tonight and quite the first half as we look at it, 14-5, to 5, a 
missed opportunity. It felt like late there, though, for the Valley Tigers. Yeah, they lost a little track of the clock, and knowing that they had a penalty and the clock started after the reset, so they go into the halftime with a timeout in their pocket that mm -hmm. they can't use now. And maybe if they call that, they get a chance at a field goal and a chance to cut it down to 14-8, uh, to eight, you know. But uh, we saw a little bit of everything here yeah. in this first half. Well, let's uh, start at the beginning after a three and out from Valley. Defense for Waukee Northwest, their first series. That was great for them. The offense gets the football, and they marched right down the field. It was a quarterback. It was a running back. It was a lot on the ground, but power football for Northwest in their first drive. Yeah, Spikesman runs it in from three yards out with 5.34 to go, and the PAT uh, caps off the 70-yard drive, and they're up 7 nothing here early. From there, it was another three and out from Valley. Their offense wasn't able to get on track, though the defense snooped up. They got a stop of Milwaukee Northwest and a high snap, and one of the crazier plays you're going to see, the ball kicked from the 20-yard line all the way back out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Yeah, it was a good burner kick there by uh, the punter, and it went out with 59 seconds to go in the first quarter. That made it 7-2. to two. Uh, The big thing there was the turnaround into the next quarter. Instead of giving up, the touchdown on that, they ended up holding them to three points. Yeah, the next drive ended in a field goal. Dawson Stein with the 39-yarder. It was 7-5 at that point. Felt like Valley was getting the momentum, kind of getting their feet getting under back, them here yeah. in week one. But then a big play again out of Waukee, this time in the passing game. Yeah, they had a couple runs, and then uh, Hayden Hundley broke free just a straight go route down the left side, and he, he gets hit in stride, and it's in for the 52-yard touchdown pass, making it at 14 to 5. And as we mentioned at the top here, an opportunity late in the half for West Des Moines Valley, but not able to get any points on the board as they go to the locker room with the timeout in their pocket. Add it all up, 14-5 our halftime score here on CISN and our halftime show presented by the Urology Center of Iowa. So Dar, for Waukee Northwest, it's your first game. You really don't know what to expect. They have to be incredibly happy where they are right now. Yeah, and you gotta keep that emotion going. You know, they're riding that high right now, but you gotta know that this is a solid Valley team and you can't let up because we saw they're toward the end of the half. They got something going, ran out of time, so they will get the ball to start the second half, so they gotta come back. And then, you know, Valley, they got to figure out defensively a little bit, some adjustments there with his young defense on how to, you know, who's got coverage in that. They broke coverage on the long touchdown pass. And so, you know, those are just some things they got to clean up at halftime. Yeah, we talked at the top, Valley replacing 10 starters defensively from a year ago. Only Drew Henderson, the only starter back from last season, and showed up at times here for the Valley Tigers. 14-5, our halftime score, presented by the Urology Center of Iowa here, our halftime show. Dar, you talk about some of those adjustments, some of the things. How about offensively? Valley, yet with a touchdown, without a touchdown on the board here. What would you like to see the Tigers do more of offensively in the second half? Well, they got the run game going, but then they weren't able to get, you know, uh, a consistent passing game going right till the end there when they started spreading it around a little bit, throwing one in the flat, then they threw one outside. They got to look for Reardon more. He's the big target. Yeah. You got to find him on a couple passes because then, you hit him a couple times, the defense is going to start looking at him more. That frees up the run game. That frees up the other receivers. So maybe look to him a little more, uh, you know, and as that offensive line settles down, gives him a little more time back there. Maybe you can get a little more balanced offensively. Really like what we saw at times out of Danny Rankins Jr. They're yes. running back. Mm -hmm. He is slippery. He is quick. Maybe in the outside a little bit more. They've run him up the middle a little bit. You can see he's a young man that likes to bounce it outside, and he's got the speed to do it. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of good things for both these teams here until just the end of that first half it was relatively penalty free there you know a couple of the delay of game penalties and then they got a jumping off sides and a holding and a little bit of that so for our first game it had been relatively penalty free so you cut those mistakes down you know and uh we talked about veteran coaching staffs. Who's going to make the best adjustments, and how are they going to do that here coming out in the second half? I'm looking forward to it. 14-5, our halftime score. Festivities happening down on the field right now with the band out there for Valley Week 1. And after what it was a season ago, friends and family, only family members allowed in early in the season. It was a different type of season. Just felt good coming up tonight here, rolling into the parking lot and seeing yeah, everybody and, with smiles on their faces. And being the parent of a band daughter who played, you know, knowing the time, the early mornings they get up and they're out there and they're working on their stuff and then no chance to perform. You know, right. the football players got to play, but they didn't get to perform a lot. So it's great for them to be back out and, and be doing their thing. And, you know, yeah, it's just good to have 
back to close to normal as we can be right now, and hopefully we'll stay with that uh, throughout the rest of the season. With that, we have another game also happening this evening on CISN TV. You can bounce over on our YouTube channel. Just bounce over, and you can find the link for Waukee High School as they're facing off against Ankeny. We'll get that score to you. It was 20 nothing last I looked. I saw Paul uh, Yeager tweeted 35 nothing now, or Peter Tarpey says. So um, Ankeny... They're, they're saying, hey, we're defending state champs. We're <laughs> yep. not going quietly here, folks. And they're certainly looking that. We'll also get more scores from around the area. Here when we come back on the Urology Center of Iowa Halftime Show, our score, once again, Waukee Northwest 14 and 5 for the Valley Tigers. We come back on the other side with more of the Halftime Show. Stay right there. Trent Condon here for the Urology Center of Iowa. Now is your chance to sit on the couch guilt-free all weekend long watching football while you heal after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. The doctors there perform my procedure in less than a half hour. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400 400- 3550 and online at iowauro.com. A guilt free football watching weekend after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat and Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. name is important sure for one it's how we connect with you find you and do business with you but what's behind the name matters more roshan corporation of iowa is now graphite construction group we're building offices retail centers tenant improvements schools and more but the most important thing we build our relationship with you let's get started on your construction project visit us at graphitegrp.com for all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at iDrDesMoines.com. Debut over the West Des Moines Valley Tiger as well. We talked a little bit about it. Dar, uh, one of the games we're looking forward to tonight, it was Ankeny against Waukee High, the split of the high schools for Waukee. Things not going as well for the Warriors tonight. They're trailing 35 0 at last check there. So, you know, a lot of people said Northwest probably had the chance to have the better season initially. Maybe going to be kind of like what we saw in Ankeny. Centennial kind of had that initial jolt out of the gates. Yeah, and, and because, again, you're, when you're the new school, there's no expectations there. You know, Waukee, they've been to the playoffs. They've been parentally 
in there fighting. But we'll, you know, we'll see. And again, you can start out slow and maybe turn it around. But we also, I think, we talked off air a little bit before we started. Ankeny, they lost some major players, but they still are pretty deep mm -hmm. on that team. So it's not a team, you know, that losing to them isn't something that you, you know, you can hang your head about. Taking a look at the number one versus number two matchup, a halftime score for you. It's Southeast Polk, a 7-0 lead over second-ranked Dowling Catholic. Touchdown came on a screen play. Xavier Wafka scored on the screen from about 15 yards out as Jackson Daly completed the pass there. Just a couple of D1 kids out there throwing passes Throw, around. Throwing around, <laughs> yeah. And you got a few more there, too, mm -hmm. on the team. So in the offensive line, and then... Um, uh, who's the other one I'm thinking of? The Caden Proctor. Yeah, Proctor. Yeah, so, you know, it's, and again, Dowling, they know it's a marathon. Right. It's not a sprint. They've lost games before and come back and brought home the big trophy. So, we'll, we'll just keep an eye on that. You know, uh, one of the stories here in Class 5A that I've been uh, following a little bit from the other side of the state, over in eastern uh, Iowa in the Cedar Rapids area, Cedar Rapids Jefferson had tonight just 21 varsity players dressed. This is a program that has had hard times, no doubt, but trying to compete at that high level with just 21 varsity players, just how difficult that can be. And whoever, you know, is working through that job, trying to build up that program. And we think about what we do here in Central Iowa, the big programs we talk about, but not the case for everybody at the 5 day level. No, and, you know, and there's been that discussion going on, too, with... Uh, the, the other teams, Des Moines teams and Ames and those want it, you know, moving out eventually here. So it's trying to find that l that level because then you look at Urbandale and they're, you know, one of the smaller schools right now just partly for the reason they're landlocked there. And, you know, as far as uh, enrollment growth goes and, and stuff, but they want to stay in there because of the programs and the competition they get. So it's not totally mirroring like the big 12 situation because you know but there is you want to have the kids a chance to play and be competitive and just trying to to find that mixture out you know and i never thought we'd have what seven classes right, yeah. <laughs> high school football but here we are and a lot of people anticipated when we saw an extra class added it would in fact be a second class of eight player football mm -hmm. we're trending that direction as well as the difference between now some of the schools that have dropped to that level some of the higher enrolling schools and then the ones at the bottom end continues to grow there so we might not be done in the growth there just trying to make things as equitable as possible for everybody and trying to even the playing field as much as possible as well yeah but and then you look at the the new census figures that came out and the and the population growth in waukee and Ankeny, you know, those two could be looking at more schools <laughs> down the road, too. Seriously, for Waukee, another high school, maybe in, you know, 10 years or so. And, and Ankeny, they've got the growth there, too. So, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I, you know, and, and they try to work it out. I know there's always a debate about it, but it's it's try to work out to get kids to play and to, to play on teams where you have a little bit of a chance to play and win and, and be in some ball games. you know. I know... The eight man has been a big boon to a lot of schools who yep. lost enrollment, but they're also able to field the team and still have that. And especially growing up in a small town, I know that football game is is mm -hmm. a, a big event in town, you know. And so, yeah, it's it's been one of those things they've tried to work through. One uh, final look here at our scoreboard. You're watching the Urology Center of Iowa scoreboard show here at the half, our halftime show. Take a look at this one. Indianola, 28-13 lead over Ankeny Centennial. That one at the half. And Ames leads Marshalltown. Old rivalry there from the Big 8 days. Hmm. And it's 8-7 at the half. Ames with the lead over Marshalltown. Little Cyclones with the new coaching staff. And they lead it by a point at the half. Once again, our score... 14 to 5, Waukee Northwest leading West Des Moines Valley and that number one versus number two matchup. It is 7 0 at the half. Southeast Polk leading Dowling Catholic. Xavier Dwanka with a touchdown grab in the only score of the first half. Dowling quarterback Jackson Smolik also left that game, went back to the locker room with an injury. Haven't heard yet if he'll be available for the second half. We'll take our final time out here at the Urology Center of Iowa halftime show back with the kickoff of the second half when we come back on our video streaming CISN TV and you're listening to us on the Bull 96.9. Stay right there.
aggressively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. If you're into sports cards, there's one place to go in Central Iowa. The Rookie Sports Cards and Clive. From current boxes and packs of sports cards, vintage cards, autographed helmets and jerseys, and the weekly bid board. Plus, you can cash in your old cards at The Rookie. Find it all at The Rookie Sports Cards in Clive. 9992 Swanson Boulevard or online, therookiesportscards.com. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola, where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. If you plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise, there's a lawyer right here in Central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a brick gentry law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. And by the Norwalk Shop. Welcome back once again. The sun has set. We're ready for the start of the second half. Waukee Northwest and West Des Moines Valley. 14 to 5, our halftime score. About 90 seconds left on the halftime clock as they tick it down here, Dar. But Valley back out there trying to find a little bit of momentum. They moved the ball late in the first half again, this time through the passing game. Didn't come up with points. Now they're going to have to start with the defense back out on the field. Yeah, and that they've had a little trouble getting their you know defensive set and get them together and coverages in that early on. So hopefully they work that all out at halftime. And Waukee Northwest has, has offensively played pretty well with the quarterback running back you know, and then mixing in some passes there. Uh, they, they got some momentum going. So the thing here, too, is your first game, you know, you practice in the heat and all this, but you're out here and late, will you get tired and will, you know, will you wear down and how is that all going to impact for the full four quarters through this ball game? That's going to be uh, part of the story, too, I think, here as we move through. Now we talked a lot about Corey the new head coach for Waukee Northwest. He's got experience. He knows a lot of the guys that he brought with him in the coaching staff. Jim Dewey made the move to Northwest, the former Waukee athletic director, and hiring Corey Kapadich, who was the defensive coordinator for Waukee. Done a really nice job. You can tell he's had this team ready to go from the get-go. Yeah, they came out ready to go, fired up, and, of course, you know, how how big would it be for them to beat Valley, the perennial, the new school, <laughs> beating the, you know, perennial power here coming out in the first game so that all momentum sticks with them but you gotta you know you gotta keep it up you can't let that uh initial uh adrenaline rush you get wear off as you move into it here start we're kind of lucky here they've I've seen they've had some some bad weather storms up north uh -huh. and a couple of games canceled and delayed but uh, i don't i think hopefully we'll get through here this tonight before we see anything here yeah you had a, a video from twitter up in green, green yeah green up that, in our uh, old neck of the woods there in north iowa yeah and a tornado up there I've seen some other areas i saw four city their game uh tonight was postponed mm -hmm. new hampton's matchup also the same move to tomorrow because of all the storms they had up north it does have that sticky feeling though yeah, it does yeah and we might get some later tonight which is fine if after the clock winds to zero here <laughs> absolutely <laughs> as we get ready to go it will be valley kicking off to waukee northwest the wolves will go left to right across your radio dial and your video screen here on cisn tv with the ball on the tee it's dawson stein wind at his back still pretty substantial win as he pounds it near the goal line and it will reach 
the goal line for a touchback, and we will start the second half just way we started the first half with a touchback. This time, though, it'll be Northwest starting from their 20-yard line. Yeah, over the head of Tristan Grubb there. He was hoping he'd get a chance to get it and bring it out, but they've had a 30-yard and an 80-yard drive so far here tonight, so we'll see how they do to start the second half. Two score lead up by nine. 12 minutes on the clock and ready to go. Two receivers right, one left. And he's shifting in the formation. Northwest puts a fullback, Brady Grisham, into the backfield. Carried to the left side and just a couple there for Carson Rankin, the, the quarterback. He's done a nice job tonight running the football. That fullback plays a big part in their offense. He gets out there and gets that lead block and helps break open those Areas, and now he's going to flank out. Trip receivers right, one left for Rankin. As they go play action pass, a slant over the head of the intended receiver is looking for Hayden Huntley, who had a touchdown grab, a 52-yarder earlier in the ball game, but it'll be third and seven after the incompletion. That's the worst throw we've seen him make. Maybe just warm up here, start yeah. second half, because he, he hit him on a, a good tight pass and then hit him on that one that was wide open. Third and seven from the 23-yard line. 11.32 left in the third quarter. West with the lead and the football. Our Central Iowa game of the week. From the shotgun, Rankin going to keep it himself. Going to the left side, and he'll be cut down after a short gain. Fourth down, and right away the Valley defense gets a three-and-out stop. And just the medicine the doctor ordered there for the Tigers. So they only give up five yards. Yeah, that's a big play for them. And now everybody watching to see if that snap, where that comes out of here, because that's how it got Valley their points to get it started with that high snap that then they kicked out of the end zone. Back deep to receive for Valley. It'll be Aiden Price and Cave Grevengood back. On to attempt the kick is Andrew Court. From the 25-yard line into the win. Cork gets his right foot to it. A line drive punt. Hits at the 45. Takes a walkie. Northwest bounce all the way inside the 30. The 25 still rolling to the 22-yard line. Might have been in the air only for about 18 yards, but it turns out to be an absolute gem. 53-yard punt. 53 yards, and that it came off his foot kind of weird. It was way flat, but the way it bounced and uh, the back, back there didn't want to try to risk picking it up and fumbling it they've had a few drop balls here tonight so yeah well in the books they don't count the roll <laughs> you know yards after bouncing they don't do that in punting so it doesn't really matter it just goes down as 53 yarder and he'll certainly take that it's been a good night out there for the senior kicker Andrew Cork for the Wolves of Northwest made both his extra points and a big punt there 53 yards backing Valley up, they'll hit it off to Price, and he's going to throw it. He's got it up there. It's rare and complete to the 50, to the 40, breaks through to the 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Tigers! On the trick play, they handed it to Price, the backup quarterback who's playing receiver. He throws it to Rarden, 78-yard touchdown, first of the season for Valley. Who said at halftime they need to get the ball more to Rarden? That's you, Dardy. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Well, I call it right every once in a while. <laughs> well, you know, the coaches are up here. They must have heard us talking. I think that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Here's the replay. <laughs> They ran a similar play earlier where they pitched it to Price. On that one, of course, he was not able to throw it. Here they hand it to him. He was eligible to throw it. He does it, completes it, and Reardon did the rest. The extra point is not through by Dawson Stein. We got a ball game. Waukee Northwest 14, Valley 12. 10-22 left to go in the third quarter as we come back. More high school football here with you in a moment name is important sure for one it's how we connect with you find you and do business with you but what's behind the name matters more roshan corporation of iowa is now graphite construction group we're building offices retail centers tenant improvements schools and more but the most important thing we build our relationship with you let's get started on your construction project visit us at graphitegrp.com 
For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Online at therookiesportscards.com. The Rookie, Central Iowa's leader in sports cards. Back to high school football on 96.9 The Bull. The video streaming on CISN TV on Trent Conda, Dar Danielson. Great ball game here. Northwest Waukee 14, West Des Moines Valley 12. The Tigers uh, pounded into the end zone on the kickoff. Another touchback for Stein. Oh. 78 yards and 13 seconds to score. Well, that's not that's bad. Not bad at all. And how about Rairden? Six yeah. foot seven tight end. He showed his speed yeah, also. Yeah, that's why, yeah, everybody's looking at him. <laughs> I uh, was meeting with his dad, Scott, earlier this week and uh, asked him, now he's built a little bit differently than the rest of you Raridans. He said, yeah, it's a little bit thin through the hips compared to the rest of us. He's got some <laughs> athleticism and speed. You see it on the hardwood yeah. when he plays basketball in there. Up the sideline for the score, 78 yards. It'll be first down and 10 from the 20-yard line after the touchback for Waukee Northwest. Rinkin out of the pistol formation this time. We'll hand it to Spikesma, who is crunched at the line. Falls forward for two, but up front, in the middle, the big man gobbling things up. How about the play there from Ramez Naba, the sophomore? Yeah, just, and there's a flag down in the pile there. I don't know if there's a little extracurricular or... Raba's going to get a breather as he yep. trots over. It'll be against the offense, a personal foul. So you're right. Probably some extracurriculars there in the bottom of the pile, and that's going to put Waukee Northwest now back in the hole. And that's something also, boy, a coaching staff. It's week one. You know there's going to be mistakes, but... Those are the kind of mistakes you just never want to see. Yeah, especially a big one like that. When you're coming out, they just scored, and you'll want to come back and get a drive going. Now, I talked about it. They've been getting good first down yardage. They haven't been behind the chains much, but now here they start out this drive with a uh, first and 20. Or He's first and 19. All after the way the back to the 11-yard yeah. line, and Rankin from the gun. Two receivers to his left. He's going to hand counter play as they try to get wide. But it'll be a big loss. The defense there again for Valley. Tigers are swarming here in the second half. A loss of six on the play. Waukee Northwest now backed all the way up to their own five-yard line. It'll be third down. Brock Barkus nowhere to go there as they come roaring in was uh, Jay Moore. Called Moore's name a couple of times. He's played well here for the Tigers on the defensive end. Third and 25 from the Northwest uh, five-yard line. 9.20 to go third quarter. The Valley's thinking about another deuce here. They already got one safety yep. in. And there's a jump, I think, maybe on Waukee. Flag Northwest. again, and it is. So move them halfway back, put them at the two and a half. Northwest continues to go backwards. Boy, if you're the defensive staff now for Valley, Randy Rippinger, the longtime defensive coordinator for the Tigers, you wonder if he's going to ratchet up some pressure now trying to get that safety. Get, yeah, get in there. As they mark, stack it up, and that would uh, tie it up, wouldn't it? It would. <laughs> Not the normal way to get to 14 if they could. Two safeties, a field goal, and a touchdown. And they're too shy of that right now. Here's the shotgun snap. They'll hand it up the middle. Safe play. Spinning back out to the five-yard line is Spikesma. Spikesma, yep. It'll be fourth and 25, and the putt team back out for Northwest. The Wolves will bring Andrew Cork back out onto the field. And Price and Graven good going back. And they're just back at the about the 45, so it's going to be good field position for Valley here. And here to get the punter, he's got his heels right back on the end line, you see there. He was under able, able to unleash, excuse me, a great line drive rolling kick the last time. He's gonna, more than anything, just try to get this one off. His pressure very well could be coming for Valley. 8-18 to play in the third. Cork gets his right foot to it, an end over end kick. 
Not a whole lot of distance. It hits at the 27. On the bounce, picked up to the 30, 28 yard line. There's the return for Cade Grevengood and great field position for the Valley Tigers as they're gonna start from about the 28 yard line. So Northwest a little bit on their heels now and West Des Moines Valley, they have come just roaring out of the locker room. Roaring back and that, of course, the big hitter, the 78 yard touchdown pass to kind of shock Waukee Northwest and here's where the defense has got to you know, buck it up a little bit. You'd hope to hold them and then maybe you're even hold them to a field goal if possible, but hold them out of the end zone. Well, they're already in field goal position with the wind at the back right now as Dawson Stein's already hit a 39 yarder. Some work, uh, Jackson Smolik, a broken collarbone, the Dowling Catholic Junior quarterback mentioned earlier. He left the game, disappointing news there for the young man, and we got movement up front here before things got started for the Valley offense. Again, the breaking news, Dowling quarterback, starting quarterback Jackson Smolik, a broken collarbone, that coming from Iowa Catholic Radio. So, boy, a tough start to the season for the squad, number two ranked Dowling Catholic. Got a pretty good backup quarterback, though, in English. A young man, really good baseball player. And he is the uh, backup, more of a runner than Smolik is. Yeah. So, well, if there's a staff that can change the course, it's certainly down. Yeah, they've, they've done it before. That's the, let's see, fifth penalty on Valley here now. And again, it comes not in a real great spot here. First down and 15. As they will go to the left side. Rankins breaks the tackle all the way near the 20 yard line. Danny Rankins Jr. He's been a playmaker for the Tigers tonight. He got the penalty plus some back there. As they'll move it forward, make it second down. At about five from the 23 yard line. Rankins Jr. will get a breather. Dion Hutch. Both these teams have had some issues sealing that outside here in this ball game. It was uh, Valley early on, now Waukee Northwest. Eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Waukee Northwest clinging to a two-point lead, 14-12. Valley with the football play action pass. Morrow's going to take a shot into the end zone. He's got a man out there. Touchdown, Tigers! Mason Morrow again with the strike. 23-yard touchdown pass. The Tigers on the board once more. This time he found Reed Schild for the six. Taking a look here at the replay. Good job selling the fake there. Knew he was going to be hit. Delivered a strike. And right there with a foot in the end zone was Reed Schild. 18-14. Valley takes the lead for the first time tonight. But again, a coverage issue because he was just standing there waiting for the ball to get to him, and the defenders were running at him as he just made the catch. They're going to go for two here as they set things up. Looking to the left side, trying to cut it back. It's Price, dies forward, gets the two. Aiden Price, he's done it with his arm here with his legs. The two-point conversion is good. Valley 20. Waukee Northwest 14 with 7.52 left in the third. We come back. High school football continues on CISN and the Bull. High school. Name is important? Sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedoctordesmoines.com. Back to the high school football and the Central Iowa Game of the Week on 96.9 The Bull. 
Trent Cotton and Dar Danielson back at Valley High School. The Tigers, their first lead of the season, now 2014 over Waukee Northwest. Trailing, but keep chopping wood, and that's what the Tigers have done. Yeah, two three and outs here for uh, Waukee Northwest to start the third quarter. They need to get a drive going here to answer. Rankin going to go to the air. He is complete to the left side, breaking through a tackle. First down on the completion. Good strike there from Rankin. To Grisham. Try and, yeah, Brady Grisham out of the backfield. He kept good balance getting that hand down to get the first down. They needed a big play like that to kind of start the drive off. He just looped it out there and did a lot of the last seven yards on his own. Back to the air again, this time wide and high on that slant. Second time we've seen that tonight, looking for Huntley there. A little bit wild on the throw. Yeah, and I think the coverage has tightened up a little bit on him, a little bit more over there. Uh, Max Barr, after Huntley caught a couple passes early, and they're playing a little tighter, and so he's trying to sling that slant in just a little quicker. Maybe bring it a little more lower into the numbers. Make it second down and 10 from the 33-yard line out of the shotgun is Rankin. He'll throw the ball, and again on that slant route, can't find the mark. That time he was looking again for number 28, Brady Grisham. And uh, maybe just not a throw that he's real comfortable with right now. Yeah, and you know, it was Rankin and Spikesman the first half on the ground mostly, and now they've taken him out of that running game and, and forced him to pass. And they are getting a little pressure on him now too back there. 7.33 left in the third quarter. Valley leads by six. Trailed by as many as nine in the first half. Another play action trying to set up the screen. Here comes the pressure, throws it up and out of bounds. Pressure coming from the backside. That Jacob on <laughs> big he's, number 60. He's been everywhere tonight. <laughs> yeah. You look up and you see him coming at you. You want to move and there's just nowhere for Rankin to go. As he, you see on the replay here, he was on is just coming with a vengeance and he did well to throw it before he sacked him back there. Fourth and 10, Northwest is going to have to bring out the punting unit again, Andrew Cork. End up 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage from the 33. And back again, deep to receive for Valley. It is Price and Grevengo. The punt, another line drive this time out to the right side on a couple of bounces. Picked up by Grevengo to midfield to the 48. Nice return. Saw earlier he let it bounce all the way. It was a 53 yarder the last two times he's come up. Caught it on the bounce and had nice returns. Well, that snap was a little bit of a rise ball coming back. It slowly looped back there. The punter did a good job to get it and get it off. But, again, a good time to pick it up on the bouncer, as you said. And now they're start in wonky territory. 48-yard line, and now Valley, who's done seemingly everything right offensively in the second half, will come out. Touchdown passes from... They're back up, back up on a trick play, Aiden Price. The last possession, the starter, Mason Morrow, has made it 2014 Valley. 7-16 left in the third. They'll shift formations, go tight. The three receivers lined up on the left side. Play action pass, Morrow stands tall. Going to take a shot, looking for Raritan. Incomplete, but a flag comes in. It's going to be pass interference there. Raritan again, not just the size, but showing the speed off. And the defensive back for Northwest Tristan Grubb him gave him a little shoulder bump there at the end. And trying to, because he didn't know where the ball was. And that may have been better than just letting him run, because if he catches it, he's likely in the end zone. But in high school, you get the 15 yards and live to play another down here. It's that conversation, you know, who has the best rules at the high school and collegiate level with the 15 yards? Is the NFL way where it's a spot foul? You can make arguments on both sides. Just know the rules going into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be first down and 10 from the now 33-yard line for Valley. Revin Good comes across the formation, play action. Morrow able to sidestep a defender, throws it out complete. To the left side, a short gain out near the 25-yard line. They'll mark him right at the 25, so make it eight. Nice play on first down. Morrow's really found his comfort zone back there now. He's able to roll out, elude the rush, look downfield, getting square on the throws. 
So he's really, really feeling comfortable now that he's completed some passes. It is second down and two. Seven minutes and two seconds left in the third quarter. Two receivers right, one left for the Tigers, including Reardon, who's lined up in the slot. Morrow from the shotgun. He'll take the snap. He's going to hand it off. Rankins Jr. breaks the tackle to 20. Skitters forward to the 17. Just pitter patters those feet and always finds a little bit more room. Again, they've been shifting up the formations. They were going with everybody kind of overloaded on one side. Now they spread it out a little more, give him a little more running room here. And now they're just a good balanced attack. They kind of got all the motion going to the right with that slot back and then hand it off. He comes back inside. Clock continues to run here in the third quarter. Valley looking to build on a six-point lead. Morrow from the shotgun. He's going to hand it off again. Looking to the left side. Not a whole lot of room. Stood up in the middle. There was Big Ben Ryland wearing number nine, the defensive tackle. 6'4", 250 pounds. He's got a bunch of college offers already. Young man, big part of the Waukee Warrior defense a year ago. He was part of the move here this season with the new high school. Yeah, we talked about it. You usually don't see those big guys with the single-digit numbers on that <laughs> defensive line, but... New, new school, new change, I guess, in the number. And well, get ready for that in the NFL level, watching some preseason games this year. It's wild because they have opened it up and letting everybody wear whatever number they want. Last year he wore 17. When Another he, good one for a yeah. big guy. Second down and eight for the Tigers from the 16. Morrow looking to throw. It's tall in the pocket, throws it out to the right flat. It's complete, spinning through a couple of tackles to the 11. Not enough for the first down. It'll be third down and short. But a nice completion as he went wide once again and found Owen Westermeyer. He had about four seconds just to sit back there. He looked to his left, looked to the middle, looked to the right, and found the open guy and threw it. So he's having time to check through the progressions here. 5.20 clock rolls, third quarter. Valley up by six. Single receiver on each side of the formation from the shotgun, Mason Mora. He'll take the shotgun snap. And he's going to hand it off. Looking for Rankins, who spins and falls forward. Get him to depend on the spot. This is going to be close, Dar. Yeah, I think his knee came down just short, but it may be four down territory anyway. A field goal here would make it a two score lead, but it is going to be but fourth a, down and less than half a yard. Yeah, and a less than a half a yard and a touchdown really puts Waukee Northwest back in a big hole. Riding up under center, anticipate a sneak here for Morrow, good athlete. He will sneak it and he will get the first. Not just got the half yard, he got a couple of yards out of that. All the way Yeah, the second the surge. <laughs> oh, those offensive linemen, they love when they get a chance to push that pile forward. Full back, tight ends in there. Even yeah, the yeah, and then now you get the backs that can come in and push on you and shove you up through there. After the Reggie Bush and the Bush push game against Notre Dame. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just allowed anymore. <laughs> First down in Gold Valley from the three-yard line. Reardon in the slot there. We're going to spread it out. Hand it up the middle. Rankins Jr. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Tigers. Valley strikes again. Their third touchdown in the third quarter. There's still 4.07 left to go. They went for two after the last one. We'll see if they do that again. They lead it by 12. We'll see what the chart says here for head coach Gary Swenson. You see the setup and just right in the middle, twists around. They had him, but uh, he twisted right into the end zone there through the tackle of Tristan Grubb. Valley is lined up for the two-point conversion. Similar formation, tight to the left side. One single receiver to the right. They're gonna pitch it out to Rankins Jr. He will score on the run. Just a quick pitch out to the left. And Rankins Jr. did the rest. Good blocking out on the left side for Valley. They lead it 28-14 as they have come out with 23 third quarter points. They lead it with 4.07 left to go. Quick timeout, back in a minute with more high school football here on the Bull and video streaming on CISN. The name is important, sure. 
For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedoctordesmoines.com. Trent Cotton and Dart Danielson, all Valley here to start the second half. Down 14 to 5 at halftime. They now lead 28-14 over Waukee Northwest. Boy, this thing has changed in an instant, Dar. Yeah, their defense looked like it was a little lost to start the game and uh, Waukee Northwest, a couple long scoring drives. But now three, three straight three and outs to start the third quarter for Waukee Northwest. Dawson Stein, who hasn't been able to kick PATs the last couple of times as Valley has gone for two, pounds another one into the end zone with the wind at his back. Touchback and Northwest back to the 20. You know, you're down still just two touchdowns here. They had so much success with the running game. You certainly got to anticipate they got to go back there. Yeah, go back to that, mix it up a little bit, and again, Try to get a good play on first down. They've had some. Uh, they've had a penalty that dropped them back. They had a, a run for loss. So you need a good first down play here. They'll work from the shotgun as a man shifts across the formation. Zone read play. Rankin going to keep it himself. He is going to be dropped in the backfield again. That Valley defense. They have been all over the place this time. It's Michael Dacey. Well, they figured it out. I was watching Spikes. I was thinking he had it heading out there. but <laughs> They got you. Good thing you were big, playing linebacker. Yeah, those big linemen knew that uh, who had the ball. Rankin had it here, and they just closed on him and shut it down. It'll be a loss on first down of three, second and 13. That was Naba in there just said, uh-uh. That front feels like it's really growing. The front seven for, Va for Valley mentioned... Ten starters gone from a year ago. Here's Spikes on the carry. A little bit of breathing room. Able to get the lost yardage back and a couple of more. A pick up a five. It'll be third down and eight with 315 left in the third. Yeah, good hard run. It gets him out, as you say, a little breathing room now and a, a manageable third down. It's a little long, but hey. Maybe play action. I don't know if you can get him to bite on the... Around it, taking a long time to get their plays in. They had that happen in the second quarter, too. Now they got it. Play clock down to 12 as they break the huddle. Or not exactly a huddle as they look to the sideline. They're going to throw. Rankin looks out to the flat, gets it complete, but not much there. Just a gain of two to Grisham. It'll be fourth down and five in the punt unit again for Northwest. Chase Hudson's in a great open field tackle there to not allow Grisham to get around the corner and up to the first down marker. And they'll be punting again into the wind. The last two times that they have punted, we've seen Cork knock that line drive punt, but both times Grevin Good has come up and caught it on a bounce. And they haven't even been, you know, if they're closer to the 50, maybe you think, well, they try a fake or something, but you really so deep, you really don't have many options but to try to kick it away. Work with his feet at the 10 yard line. And here comes a whistle. I think the clock ran down, play clock. I don't see a flag. Did they use a timeout though before? No, there'd be a false start. So a five yard penalty, and now it'll be fourth down and 10 back to the 20. And well, now they're giving a timeout. They looks did like. give him the timeout. Timeout on the field. We'll keep it right here. Dar, want to take a moment while we can to thank our great radio sponsors here with us this season on 96.9 The Bull and our video streaming on CISN, including Interior Advantage, aahip.com. If you're looking for hip replacement, we can certainly help you with that. Thank you to Raritan Associates for their continued support of high school athletics. By Central Bank, CISN 
TV, of course, where you can see us. Elite Eye Care, University Avenue in West Des Moines. Graphite Construction Group. Rush Niggett of Brick Gentry Law PC. The Norwalk Shop. The Rookie Sports Cards and the Urology Center of Iowa with us here throughout this high school football season. 155 to go in the third. Punt unit back out. Court with the right-footed punt as he knuckles it near midfield. Fair catch called for and grabbed by Grevengood. And he'll grab it, in fact, in, Val in Waukee Northwest Territory at the 48. Short field again for the Tigers as they have scored 23 points already here in the third. Yeah, it wasn't a bad punt, but, um, you know, <laughs> you needed one to bounce and roll. But Valley, where they let those roll early, they've come up on them now. And yeah, now, yeah, Valley's here in a good position. It was a 24-yard punt, but the Waukee Northwest offense needs to get together over there and, and figure out something to work against this Valley defense. First and 10 from the Northwest 48 for the Tigers. Valley with the football and a two-score lead. They'll hand it off to Rankins. Try to go left, nothing there. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Danny Rankins Jr., he's had a nice game for the Tigers. We've seen the passing game in a big time way with Mason Morrow, also Aiden Price who came in and ran the trick play through the touchdown to Eli Rairden. Tigers have been doing everything right in the second half, both offensively and defensively. As clean certainly as they have played. As we play in week one, glad to have you with us here tonight. Just over a minute left, second down and 10. Morrow gonna roll to his right, looking up the field, pressure comes. Steps up, eludes the tackler. Oh, broken ankle of a defender there if we were playing basketball. Juked him and picks up four. He really kept that alive, yeah, with the, with the feet. And looked like he had a lot more too, but they finally closed on him, but... Gave the head and shoulder shimmy. That'd have been a crossover dribble if he was on the basketball floor. Yeah. As he went out there and pressure was coming from behind, another the other way. <laughs> Unable to bring it all the way to the 43-yard line. Makes a third manageable. Third and five after the gain of five. For Mason Morrow, the senior quarterback. Wolves need a stop here. Morrow against pressure. Takes a shot up the field, overthrown and incomplete. It'll be fourth down from the 43 for Valley. Well, the two touchdown lead, probably Eight. the time. Try to pin him deep here, you'd think. Aiden Beardy got in there and got the pressure and didn't let him get release and step through that pass. So, And here comes the punt team with 14 seconds left in the third quarter. It'll be Dawson Stein on to punt it away from the 43 as he tries to pin Waukee Northwest back to end the quarter. Stein's done a good job both kicking and punting here tonight. Knuckles one down, fair catch called for, goes over the head, hits at the five but bounds into the end zone for a touchback and Northwest will get the football at the 20 yard line. Well, you kind of think about it too, Dar, and think about practice. I'm not sure how many times Stein has probably practiced this year with the kind of wind we've had this evening. Yeah, with with getting it out of there. But the thing here is can Waukee Northwest regain some of that momentum they had early on offense? And credit the Valley for the coaches for adjusting their defense at the half. down in 10 as he'll hand it to Spikesma up the middle but again not much breathing room Drew Henderson there in the final play of the third quarter the Valley explodes for 23 in the third they lead it 28-14 over Waukee Northwest will come back the fourth quarter come your way on 96.9 the bowl and CISN Trent Iowa, Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. In 10 minutes or less, let Schottenkirk Chevy make you an offer on the spot for your vehicle regardless of make, model, condition, or value. 
With our early lease termination program, we can help you get out of your lease, whether you bought from us or not. Click, call, or stop in to get an offer for your car in 10 minutes or less. Who loves you, Iowa? Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee does. WaukeeChevy.com. Holt Plumbing and Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm reminded of that every day as I see our fleet of vehicles in all shapes and sizes head out to help customers in need. We work hard to keep our vehicles clean and in good shape. Some are customized with great ideas and some maybe not so much but at the end of the day a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us just one more reason why more and more central iowans are saying let holt handle that to the field for the play-by-play here's trent condon 28 14 valley leading Waukee northwest well we have a moment let's pause 10 seconds for station id on the radio side you are listening to high school football and the central iowa game of the week on KXNO HD2 Ankeny, 96.9 The Bull. Back to the action with Trent Condon. First down play, Waukee Northwest takes the shot up the field, but incomplete. Went play action, Dar, something you were looking for, but over yeah. the head there, it looked like the receiver maybe off kilter there with ranking the quarterback. Yeah, I had Hayden Huntley out there, but I don't know if he thought he was going to just break straight deep or thought he was covered, so he overthrew him, but that ball was thrown way beyond the receiver. 28-14, West Des Moines Valley leads. Rankin to throw again, rolls to his right, hits at the sticks, a first down grab as it is complete. Good strong throw as he's able to find Jaden Ingstrom. Well, those are the kind of plays that they're certainly going to need. Are they giving, yep, they are going to give the first down. I th- thought they looked at him. That's their first first down here of the second half. Wow. Says they've gone three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. Mm. 11.50 left in the fourth quarter. Another throw, this one too strong for Spikes. He got his hands up, but it bounds off his hands. A little too much mustard on that one on the swing pass. Yeah, that defense is just kind of throwing all their spacing and timing off here right now. We saw Spikesman take that pass in the first half, and he had a big gain off of it. But there, they didn't even let him get out and get in the flat. It'll be second and ten. Three receivers left, one right for Rankin of Northwest. He rolls that way. He's going to take a throw up the field, overshoots his receiver. Looking for Sam Johnson, the sophomore wide receiver. Johnson also played Wildcat quarterback earlier in the ball game when Rankin had to leave after his helmet was knocked off. Nelson Kevin all back there on coverage for the Tigers. They've sorted out their coverage a little better too here in the secondary. And it's made Rankin a little less shy about or a little more cautious about throwing it, trying to throw it right in there. Third and ten. Northwest to throw. Complete right at the sticks again for a first down. Again, Hayden Huntley on the grab. And Dar, you're right. You put it around that young man's hands, he's yeah. holding it in. Yeah, that's what, it, you know, last season he didn't make super huge plays, but he made when they needed 5, 10 yards, he runs precise routes and you stick it to his hands, he's going to catch it most of the time. 18 catches for 158 yards last season for Waukee High. And the split here this season of the two Waukee High Schools. Play action, looking up top again for Huntley. Oh. Just over his head. About two yards too far down the field for him, but... Uh, like what Waukee Northwest has done now, knowing that they got their wind at the back, they're taking some deeper shots up the field here in the fourth quarter. It'll be second and ten, and when you got a security blanket on third down like Huntley, it makes it a little easier. Yeah, you, you know that you got a chance there. And now they need one of those other guys, too, to to because uh, they're doubling him over here. They need one of the other guys to kind of step up, make a play. Three receivers out there. They hand it to Spikes. A big hole. Breaks the tackle. Oh. Splits a couple of defenders <laughs> to the 45 of Valley. A first down. And he was a shoelace he, he, away. Yeah, he was six. a Max Barr fingertip <laughs> from taking it to the house there. But Barr just caught him, as you said. And, man, that was. <laughs> Pick up a 14 quickly. Here comes Northwest again. They throw it out to the right. That's complete for a gain of six. Offense picking up some momentum now for Waukee Northwest. 28-14 our score. 
Valley leads it by two touchdowns over Northwest with 11 minutes to go. Yeah, going a little more up-tempo here, a little tempo to it, trying to keep the defense back on their heels, and it's working so far. Out of the shotgun, they're going to hand, no, yes, they are going to hand it. That time, Remkin got me on the uh, pump fake. He handed off on a counter play, and it's a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and about three. Yeah, I thought he still had it too. He got on, rolled left and pumped it, but Spikesma had it running back the other way. So big play here, although down by two scores and maybe four down territory here. As we approach the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter. Third down and three, the lineup under center. They're gonna sneak it with Rankin. Had a couple of fullbacks. I think he got it. On the back. It's pretty close. And it looks like the far side official did give it to him. Near side as well. First yep. down. He's right across that 35 yard line. That's where they needed to go. How often do you see a third and three quarterback sneak? <laughs> well, I saw Iowa do that a few times <laughs> against Minnesota. But yeah. yeah, high school you don't. <laughs> but It'll work. They'll go right back to it again. They're going to hand it off power formation, but brought down. Not It'll be a loss on the play. Spikes must rip down in the backfield. Yeah, not that time. Defense is right there. Good work up front from the Valley defense. We've talked about on what kind of work he has done up there. As Nava's had a nice game plugging the holes. As Rinkin wants to throw. Across the middle. Got a man out there. Complete touchdown. Waukee Northwest. He found the sophomore. Sam Johnson for six. Don't go anywhere. The Wolves are right back in it. Sophomore Sam Johnson just snuck back behind the defender and found himself all alone for the score on the pass from Rinkin. As we watch the replay here on CISN, just a blown coverage. The defender went to the middle of the field. There was nobody helping him out on the backside. And an easy score for the Wolves. 28-20 with the PAT pending. Here comes Andrew Cork on to attempt the point after. The snap is back, hold down, kick on its way. It knuckles through. 28-21, Valley's lead cut in half with 9.26 left to go in the quarter. We come back on the Bull and CISN TV. Join plan to buy a franchise business or you're thinking of starting a new franchise there's a lawyer right here in central Iowa that can help you through the process Rush Niggett, a brick gentry law PC has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business learn more online at rushonbusiness.com let Rush Niggett help you buy or start your franchise Rush Niggett, the franchise lawyer with brick gentry law PC it's good to have Rush on your side Trent Condon here for the Urology Center of Iowa. Now is your chance to sit on the couch guilt-free all weekend long watching football while you heal after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. The doctors there perform my procedure in less than a half hour. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400-3550 and online at iowauro.com. A guilt-free football watching weekend after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. 28, Waukee 21 with 9.26 left to go in the fourth quarter. As Northwest will kick it away with their wind at the back into the end zone. And one thing that we have seen, Dar, team that's had the wind at their back, they've had the best chance offensively. Best chance. And, and credit Waukee, they saw, hey, we need to do, switch it up. They went more tempo. They got up to the line. They were running the plays they knew they had uh, then valley's defense a little tired on their heels so they kept running quick plays and then uh, credit rankin he's come back and he hit some receivers and uh made some big plays there in the final with uh, sam johnson for the uh, touchdown 36 yard touchdown to put him within one score here 9 26 on the clock in valley they've done a lot right here in the second half but We'll see if the offense can grind out some yards now after Northwest just responded a moment ago. They put a man in motion. They'll play action to it. Pressure comes. Throws across the middle. He's got a man there. 
And did it hit no, the ground? No, he hit the ground. No, yeah, incomplete. He hit the turf. Looking for Rairden across the middle. The throw was a bit behind as Morrow had pressure in his face. It'll be second and ten. They but went back to that look, though, with Aiden Price, the backup quarterback, who also plays some wide receiver. Once they pitched it to him, the second time they handed it to him, and he threw a touchdown. But I tell you, play. if he would have completed that with a guy around his waist like that sliding down, that would have been one heck of a throw. But just had to throw it a little too low because of the defender on him. But shows you what kind of an athlete he is. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Valley from their own 20-yard line. They'll have a bunch formation. Three receivers left. One to the right. Out of the shotgun. Mason Morrow and Valley's going to use a timeout with the 919 left. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them back here in a moment with more high school football. Stay right there. You can see it. Picture it. The building name is important. Sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. Let's go out to the field for the play-by-play. -play. Here's Trent Condit. Alongside star Danielson, thanks for joining us here tonight all season long. You can catch high school football on CISN TV. Multiple games each and every week. We'll be back with you next week with our game of the week in Ankeny. This will be the Battle of Ankeny. The Hawks versus the Jaguars. Looking forward to that and seeing old friend Paul Yeager, who's on the call this evening up there for... The Hawks and the Warriors of Waukee here. 28-21, our score, Valley leading Waukee Northwest. Play action pass for the Tigers. In the flat complete, it'll be a loss on the play. He was able to find the second tight end, Owen Westermeyer, but it'll be a loss of two, third and 12. Now that, yeah, this momentum all now shifted here to Northwest. Good pressure on the quarterback and then just good open field tackle there to uh, bring him right down with Griffin Gamble, the Will linebacker. And now, big play here for Northwest if they can get a stop and force a punt, get the ball back. Trying to get off the field on third and 12. Morrow looks out to his left. They set up a tunnel screen. It's complete to the 20, but brought down at the 22 yard line. Cade Grevengood picks up four. He needed 12, like the play call. Great yeah. defense, though, for Northwest. Griffin Gamble right back in there again to make the tackle. Yeah, looked like he had room as he got out there, but uh, they plugged it up enough to run him down and stop him short of the first down. So they will punt here for the first time, I believe, in the uh, second half. Dawson Stein will come out to do the punting. Stein now punting into the wind again. One returner back deep for Waukee Northwest. Tristan Grubb. Stein against pressure. It's blocked! Oh. Blocked by Northwest. Ball is loose. It is into the end zone. Still loose. Who's going to fall on it? Is it a touchdown or a safety? They'll unload the pile. We know Waukee Northwest is going to get some points. What's the score going to be? Still no signal down there. Touchdown. It's a touchdown. Block punt by Northwest. It's a one-point game. What a change here in the fourth quarter. After Valley dominates the third, Northwest has done it here in the fourth. They're an extra point away Let's from see. tying it up. We see who blocked it here. 34. That's Eli Moses. Moses was in there, and then I thought he might have had it down there, but it squirted into the end zone, and then there's a scramble. Let's see if we can see on the replay here who came away with it as they unpiled them. Well, we can't tell there, but I thought maybe it might have been Jaden Angstrom. 
But anyway, <laughs> oh, man. holy cow. Well, we've had just about everything now, haven't we? <laughs> that we have. A block punt for a touchdown for Waukee Northwest. And now Andrew Cork, a kick away from tying this thing up. After Valley outscored Waukee Northwest 23 0 in the third, it is 13 now 14 0 on the other side. 28 28 after the extra point, a late whistle down on the field as there was some contact of the kicker, Cork. I don't see a flag though on the field. The referees are huddling over there and talking things over. They are going to be personal foul. It will be roughing the kicker, and they will attach that to the kickoff when we come back. We're tied up. Valley 28, Waukee Northwest 28. High school football continues back here in a moment. Do you plan to buy a franchise business, or you're thinking of starting a new franchise? There's a lawyer right here in central Iowa that can help you through the process. Rush Nigget, a brick gentry law PC, has set up an affordable service to help individuals considering buying or starting a franchise business. Learn more online at rushonbusiness.com. Let Rush Nigget help you buy or start your franchise. Rush Nigget, the franchise lawyer with Brick Gentry Law PC. It's good to have Rush on your side. Trent Condon here for the Urology Center of Iowa. Now is your chance to sit on the couch guilt-free all weekend long watching football while you heal after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. The doctors there perform my procedure in less than a half hour. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400 400- 3550 and online at iowauro.com. A guilt free football watching weekend after your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. 8866. Let's go! The Central Iowa Game of the Week on 969 The Bull is brought to you by Graphite Construction Group, the Urology Center of Iowa, and by the Norwalk Shop. Trent Condon, Dar Danielson back with you. It'll be a kickoff from the 45. They're just going to pooch it down, try to pin them inside the 10. Ball is loose. That's a live football. Valley fell on it, I believe. I think he did, but. Whew, dangerous play for the Tigers. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you, you're thinking maybe if you let it go, it might go out of bounds and there's a penalty the other way, but then it kind of held there. And Valley's lucky to get at the, on 11. You see the. The replay here. Yeah, it kind of it kind of caught and, and rolled back. And he did well to get on that ball. But now Valley's in poor field position here. They got to go about 90 yards. 736 left in the fourth quarter. 14 straight from Waukee Northwest after it looked like the Wolves might be cooked. Well, they have come storming back in the fourth quarter to tie it up. Morrow looks to hand it off. Left side spinning through a tackle. Rankins Jr. out to the 15-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds there. Nice gain on first down and a little breathing room for Valley. Rankins Jr., the outstanding running back. He's had a nice night tonight. Or Valley. As the Tigers try to catch their breath a little bit, get a couple of first downs at the very least here. Yeah, and still mix it up a little run there. Don't start just throwing the ball. Now, Morrow didn't have a lot of time to throw in that last series, but we'll see what they decide to do here. From the shotgun, it'll be a throw. Tight coverage out there, complete. It'll be short of the first down, and it'll bring up a third down as he was able to find Reed Schilb for the completion, but just a gain of a couple. Smith was, Sinjin Smith was right on him. As soon as he caught it. Tight coverage. It's third down. We'll call it five for Valley. Backed up at their 17-yard line. We go inside of seven minutes left here in regulation. Waukee Northwest student section bouncing up and down over there. They like this opening game. They are pumped up with the new high school. And they'll go with the counter play. They get it to the left side. And the first down for Dion Hutch. They used the speedster, brought him in. They brought Aiden Price across the formation. We've seen that a lot. It's almost some window dressing as they handed it to Hutch. Yeah, and then big play to get the first down here. Keep things moving. 
Do you, you don't feel quite as, uh, you know, like you're with your back to the wall now. You're out at the 25. First and 10, fresh set of downs for the Tigers. Tight bunch formation. Three receivers left, one right for Mason Morrow, the quarterback. They'll go back to that same look. Hand it off again, falling forward for about three on the Valley oh, run as again they got it to Hutch. So Hutch with a couple of carries. They go to the speedster. 5'7", 170 pounds, dripping wet with his pads on. Maybe a couple of bricks in his pocket as well. Yeah, but quick on the football field is. is important. You know, you've seen a lot of the the Olympic sprinters who couldn't make it on the football field. They could go fast all at once, but you short, short burst and move, and that's, that's the key in football. Second down and eight from the 27-yard line. Play action pass. Looking up the field is Morrow. He's going to take a shot. Looking for Raritan. Oh, the deflection. did he get it? No. Did Shelby got the catch? Did he get a foot no, down? No, no. This official Out says of no. Bounds. It almost, it went from almost interception to almost reception there. Shelby with an incredible catch on the sidelines. He caught it, but they say the foot was out of bounds. Morrow had some pressure coming at him as he let that one go. Off the deflection. Ooh, looked like maybe that right foot you was might down. Have got down. I don't know. Tight call there. But that official, the line's went right down the line. He had eyes right there on it. And it's incomplete. So brings up third and long here. Certainly a change in this one with 534 left. Two receivers to the left from under center Mason Morrow. Play action pressure. Tries to lose it, flips it up, ball oh, deflected, oh, incomplete. <laughs> oh. Tried to chase that one down, Ben Gardner, Ryland. Gardner popped it up in the air, yeah. Off the deflection, it'll be fourth down, and Valley's going to have to punt again. That was almost a pick sixer there if he <laughs> could bring that in, but so three straight, uh, forced him to punt three straight times here now for Waukee Northwest. Defense, they have ratcheted things up. They've made the right adjustments, and this has been... Just a flip around of the third quarter, isn't it? it? Is. When Valley had all the momentum and stopped them and they were scoring. The wind has been important. Who's had their wind at the back? Valley's going into it as they punt it away with Dawson Stein, and we got movement up front again. It'll be another penalty. So it continues going the wrong direction for the Valley Tigers. They led here in the fourth quarter 28-14, but Waukee Northwest has responded in a big time way. And now we are tied 28 apiece. Big game early on in the season too, you know, you had experience, inexperienced guys out there that are learning and just jumped that time. From the 23-yard line, Stein, a high punt into the wind. That'll hang up and be caught at the 48 with the fair catch. And great field position again now for Waukee Northwest as the Wolves have bounced back and mentioned a moment ago, Dara, I really thought it just looked like Valley flexing their muscle, settle down. Yeah, it looked like the same old Valley. They yeah. come out, and now they're going to steamroll it to the end, but the credit Northwest, uh, they can turned that around when we went to the fourth quarter. Their defense responded, and now the offense has come back and responded. Five minutes, 20 seconds left to go in a tie football game. From the pistol formation, Rankin will hand it. Left side, Spikes money. He darts forward for about two. And then maybe just even a yard. Stout up front. Good work by Henderson and company for the Tigers. Also hit on the tackle. That was Nelson Cavanaugh. Yeah, coming up from his defensive back spot there. Inside of five minutes to play. Tied up second down and nine from midfield. For Waukee Northwest, they continue their no huddle luck with the quarterback, Carson Rankin, a senior. Never thrown a varsity pass until tonight. Good runner. He's done it with his arm and his legs to this point. He'll go play action. Now he's got to step up in the pocket. Able to fight forward for about three. It'll be third down and six from the 47. 
Ryan Kennan there on the tackle. Keenan on the tackle. Looked like he had a little more room there, but Keenan closed the door on him. He got a couple, but... I keep saying big third down, but we've had a lot yeah. here so far in this second half. Well, you know, he's going to be looking for his security blanket, Hayden Huntley. Yep. He's out here on the left this time. And the thing with Huntley, he's, he can run that short route or he can take off on you, too. Three receivers to the right, Huntley to the left. They're going to hand it to Spikes Moe's hit right at the line. Great defensive presence off the end by Jay Moore. Well, and they were bringing pressure that time, going to try to force a quick play, and they went with the run, and they ran right into that kind of pressure. As you see there, everybody coming in off the edge and just got him in the backfield before he had a chance to even get going, Jay Moore. So... Fourth down and five. They are going to bring the punt team out. Wind at their back and going to try to pin Valley back into the wind. Clock runs with 3.15 to play in the fourth quarter. Price and Kevin Good back there. Corner kick as they try to angle towards the sideline. A high bounce. Hits at the 10. Still rolling to the six. Make it the five. five. A beauty there by Andrew Cork. And it'll be... 95 yards away for pay dirt here for Valley with 3.05 left. Well, now, Valley, of course, would love a score here, but they also have to be cognizant of what is happening here into the wind, how difficult it's been yeah, for teams and, to move the ball. And don't turn it over to good enough field position that Waukee can get back into field goal position here. You want to get some first downs, if anything, and flip the field a little bit if you can't keep it going. Got an update. Southeast Polk wins it at the gun. 13-7 on the last play of the game. Valley looks up the middle. Mason Morrow brought down, though, right away. Well, they had a couple of those wild ones last year <laughs> where the Southeast Polk won late. And Final play of the game, and oh, what a start to the season with number one versus number two. A great game there. We got a great one here. Waukee Northwest in their first ever varsity football game. Tied up with the Valley Tigers. 28 apiece, two and a half to play. Clock is running at yeah, second and, you, and 11. I was just going to say, you wonder if Valley gets any yardage here and how if uh, Waukee Northwest may have to take a timeout to reserve a little time. Under center, Morrow will hand left side Rankins. Rankins breaks a tackle, still on his feet. Pitter patters forward, still on his feet. Finally hit at about the 16 yard line, shoved out of bounds. We'll see if that stops the clock. It will. It will. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. With 2:07 left to play, so didn't have to use one of those timeouts, but it is third down and short. Yeah, makes puts them in a real manageable third down here, and keeps their drive going if they can convert this. Two timeouts on both sides here in the final 2.07 of regulation tied up at 28. Third and two. They're going to sneak it forward with Morrow and this one is going to be close. We'll see that top side official yeah, it's a great hard. angle on it. To see if he did get that first down stick. They needed to get to the, like the 17. It's going to be or close. 16. A Waukee Northwest yeah. defender, he's saying that we stopped him. And they're going to bring the chains out on the field. This is the right decision, certainly. Bringing the chains out and seeing exactly what it is. One minute, 56 seconds left in regulation. West Des Moines Valley 28, Waukee Northwest 28. If they don't get it, it'll be fourth down in inches, but they're back at their own 17. Stretch it out, and it is still can't see for sure. I can't see the players on my way there. Yeah. Same with our camera What crew. are they calling it here? They're going to say fourth down. It is <laughs> this a chain link away from a first down. Well, a little more. He's saying a little more. He's saying about <laughs> four inches, maybe three chain links. Or maybe, you know, I don't. There it looks. Yeah, it's 
<laughs> it, it is, I think, a chain link away. Yeah, you're I'm right. I'm not being facetious. This no, is not he, it up. Yeah, it is, but he came out like <laughs> this, like it was more like four inches, but he's picking up the link right there to where they're going to spot it. So you're right. It's all just the clip on the end there of the chains. And that's all that it is. Now, if you're Gary Swenson, you need an inch, literally yeah. an inch, but you're at your 17. If you don't get it, if there's a bobbled snap, if something happens, you're going to put them on the doorstop. Yeah, but you trust your quarterback, I think, you know, and uh, sneak it. Sneak it, get that yard, and give yourself a chance. Or the other thing is they're putting into the wind. We've seen how difficult yeah. that is. Northwest would get, get great field position, and they're going to keep the offense on the field at their own 17-yard line. Valley's going to go for it. Fourth down and an inch. Mason Morrow comes out under center. He looks for that inch. He's going to sneak it. Hard snap, now looks over. Oh, they're going to use time a timeout. Out. I was just going to say, you don't want your offensive lineman jumping, but they came up and they were looking for the quick walkie jump. But, well, now you then, too, you, you burn a timeout, which would leave them with one. Because mm -hmm. if you do get it, then they'll stop the clock and you can regroup and get up right away. 144, still quite a bit of time. Well, we saw them march down the field late in the first half. Some mismanagement of the clock, though. Didn't give them a field goal Good. opportunity. Yeah. They did that with the passing game. This is different, though. They're playing into the wind now. And yeah, it's and, still and going into the wind, like you say, you're, you know, you're getting maybe 25, 30 yards a punt into the wind, which would still maybe put it, give Waukee Northwest the ball on, the other, on their half, you know. So there is a little bit to talk about here. Oof. <laughs> Coming up after this one, we will hand out our Graphite Construction Group hard hat player of the game. A lot of young men in consideration for those honors here this evening. It has been back and forth a tale of well, seemingly quarters. It all started early on. It was Waukee, marched right down the field, led it 7-0. Valley then had a spurt, made it 7-5. Third quarter was all the Tigers. The fourth quarter's been all the Wolves. We're tied. 28-28, and here comes the offense again for Valley. Fourth and an inch from their own 17-yard line. Mason Morrow, the quarterback, sneaks forward and got, got the first down. He came out the backside yeah. there. I thought he might flip back, but uh -huh. he, he got the surge ahead. Yeah, the way he came out, you're thinking, man, if he falls backwards, it's first down Waukee Northwest, but he fell forward. First down, Tigers. But they didn't stop the clock. They did initially until oh, they, did they spotted oh, until it. Until they respotted re yep. it? Okay. So they spotted it, and the clock is back running. So but here's the replay. We can watch this on the replay when it's like he's up in there, and then he slid to the right. Man, the, if where he was at, it might not have been, might not have had enough. But Well, now nope. Valley may be content just to run this thing out. They got the first down. Not going to give it up. They're still back at their own 18-yard line. They're going to throw, though. Throws it to Grevin Good. A low throw, but complete for a short gain. And a timeout is going to be called out on the field. I believe that is by Waukee Northwest. It is. So that will be their second timeout used of the half. 62 seconds remain in a tie game. Valley 28, Waukee Northwest 28. Don't say, it, Don't say it, Pete. Don't say it. You know what my nickname is, <laughs> Mr. Overtime. Well, <laughs> we're trying. To, we're treading that direction. If there's ever a week for it to happen, the week one. Yeah, is a good. Yeah, yeah. we're and, all and fresh. We're ready to go. Yeah, and you know what a ball game here. These two teams, the way they fought back, it looked. You know, like you said, I was ready to give up uh, Waukee Northwest for dead there after the 23 straight. Valley had all the momentum, and then they come out and stop uh, Valley and come right back and score, so. Well, now you think if you're Valley, you know if you run the football here, don't get much of anything, Lucky Northwest is going to use their final timeout. Final timeout, yeah. So is this the time that you do take a shot? You go up the up top to Eli Raird or one of your yeah, wide receivers? Or, you know, roll your quarterback out, and then if it's not there, he can just run around and go down. With a minute two left, it's second down and five. Man in motion. They're going to try that trick play again with Price. Instead, he's going to run and pushed out of bounds. It's going to depend on the spot. Not sure where he's stepping. Looked like they had Reardon open up the yeah. scene there for a minute, but. 
the trick play that we saw earlier as they handed off to Aiden Price, the backup quarterback, who also plays some wide receiver. They've kind of built this package where he runs a jet sweep motion. This See, time they handed to him. He was looking to throw. And you're right. Just for a moment, he had the receiver there. Decided though to make the safe. Yeah, play. make the safe play and don't. And, and that's probably what they told him. Don't throw it if it's, you're not absolutely certain, because we don't want it picked off. We want to go to overtime, if nothing else here. It's third and two from the Valley 26. Tigers with the ball, with 56 seconds left. Both teams each with the timeout. They pitch it to Rankins Jr. Stiff arms, got the first down, breaks another tackle to the 35. 49 seconds left, the clock will stop as they set the chains at the 35 now. Now you would want to hurry up here, because yeah. if you can get into field goal range with a couple big plays, you still got a timeout left. As they set the ball, the clock will run inside of 45 seconds left. From their own 35, the Valley Tigers in a tie game. Shotgun snap for Mason Morrow. Looks to his left, now to his right. Now to the middle. He's going to take a shot. He's got a tight end over. Shoots him by an inch. Looking for Owen Westermeyer up top. Just over his head there. Just a, not a bad throw, but just... Mm -hmm. And into the wind. And you don't want to underthrow it and get it picked off in that spot, but... Gave yeah, that, an that's a tough thing. You got the wind blowing in your face, but... Uncranked it there and just about two yards long. But it does stop the clock. Second down and 10. Second down and 10 with 30 seconds to go for Valley from their own 35. 28 28. Waukee Northwest, their varsity debut against the traditional power of the Valley Tigers from the gun. Morrow looks left, now rolls, looking across the middle, incomplete, a crossing route there. Tried to get Rarden. It'll be third and ten. He went up for it, but good defense. Both these defenses have made some good adjustments in this in this ball game here. When it looked like the offenses are rolling, Valley had theirs rolling in the third quarter. Waukee Northwest adjusts, and then now Waukee Northwest offense picked it up. But third and ten, 24 seconds and a timeout for Valley. The well, best thing here for them is you don't give up the ball and you either get in scoring or you run out the clock and go to overtime. Morrow, he is going to hand it off up the middle. It'll be about a gain of three, not enough for the first down. Northwest will use their final timeout with 18 seconds on the clock from the 40, I uh, checked that from the 39 yard line. Now Valley's gonna have to punt this away and do it into the wind. Now Waukee Northwest, an opportunity for them. They blocked a punt already tonight, Yep. so pressure has worked. Or do you look to set up a return, or even if you have a gadget play, a specialty, a, a reverse out of a punt, is this the time you bring yeah, it out? Yeah, it's the time now because, you know, if you score, you win. Yep. <laughs> but uh, if you don't, then you go to overtime. A well, thing you don't want to do is cough it up, turn it over. But And for Valley, again, you want to protect. You don't want to get it blocked again because that – you said that block was big that got him back into the ball game. And a wild night of football here across the state. Number one versus number two. It was a walk-off win on the final play of the game for Southeast Polk over Dowling Catholic. The Maroons lost their starting quarterback to a broken collarbone. Here, it was all Waukee Northwest early. 23 straight points in the third by Valley. They led by two touchdowns, but Northwest has come back with two scores. Back deep to receive. It'll be Tristan Grubb for Wonky Northwest. Dawson Stein to punt. He pounds one into the wind of beauty. Spiraling punt, fair catch called for it to 24 with 12 seconds left. And there more than anything, Grubb, just make sure he got his hands on that one. Yeah, I mean, he, he probably had some yardage there. He could have run with it, but he just thought, again, no mistakes, no turnovers. Let's just catch it and give us a chance. Maybe a shot down the field. Look for Hayden Hundley, but live the play to overtime if you can. 
Either way, this uh, first ever game for <laughs> Waukee Northwest is going to go down as, as one they'll talk about for a long time. And they're just going to take a knee here. So we'll play two overtime. 28-28, Waukee Northwest and West Des Moines Valley. Back in a minute with OT. They'll start from the 10-yard line. When we come back, 96-3, the bull in CISN TV. If you're thinking of a name is important, sure. For one, it's how we connect with you, find you, and do business with you. But what's behind the name matters more. Roshan Corporation of Iowa is now Graphite Construction Group. We're building offices, retail centers, tenant improvements, schools, and more. But the most important thing we build? Our relationship with you. Let's get started on your construction project. Visit us at graphitegrp.com. For all of your and your family's eye care needs, make it Elite Eye Care. Dr. Ethan Heisman, Dr. Heidi Bell, and Dr. Kelsey Sawatsky provide expert eye care close to home. From eye exams to contact lenses, eyeglasses to sunglasses, make Elite Eye Care your local optometrist. Set up your next eye care appointment with Elite Eye Care, 9250 University Avenue in West Des Moines, and online at eyedrdesmoines.com. After your vasectomy from the Urology Center of Iowa. Let's go! The Central Iowa Game of the Week on 96.9 The Bull is brought to you by Graphite Construction Group, the Urology Center of Iowa, and by the Norwalk Shop. Trent Condon alongside Dar Danielson. We are in overtime. West Des Moines Valley 28, Waukee Northwest 28. Thought we had a chance at a good game, Dar. I anticipated nothing like this. This has been as good as you can find as the teams will come back out to midfield. High school rules a little bit different than maybe what you're used to, both at the collegiate and the NFL rule, though it does look very similar to the collegiate rule. Instead of starting though at the 25, they start at the 10 yard line. Yeah, yeah. So that and is the, the change. The key is the coin flip too, because you, you always want to go on defense first, because then you know what you need. If you stop them, you can win with a field goal, and so that'll be key here. Still about a minute and a half left on the clock. There is a predetermined amount of time they put on there, kind of like what they have at halftime. Obviously not as long, but a little bit extra time here as we get ready for it as they go through. Right now the coin toss, Dar, he's got his binoculars. We'll see if he's got a good look for us down there. You zoom in on that he's coin. Well, he's re he's rethrowing it. Do it again. Had a do over. And Valley. now he's talking to Valley. So Valley, I'm going to guess, got the choice, and they'll probably take defense. If that is the case, yeah. he'll officially give us the call here in a moment. So we're going to move down to the north end of the field. They will go with the wind at their back as the wind has been out to the south. This is where all the scoring has been going this way for the most part here this evening. Yeah, going you both right could go the left. same way, so. But. And out on the field for Valley. Here comes the defense. They won the toss. They elected to play defense first. It'll start from the 10 yard line in Waukee Northwest. They'll bring their offense onto the field. Carson Rink in the quarterback. Tanner, Tanner Spikesma, outstanding running back. That offensive line's been good tonight. Euler, Schumacher, Winter, Olsen, and company. Hayden Hundley's been uh, the man out there, and Sam Johnson had a big catch, too, for touchdown for Waukee Northwest. So we'll see what happens as they're huddled up over there on the far side, Valley. Down on defense, ready to go. I was ready to chalk it up as the Valley comeback win <laughs> that third quarter after they rolled off 23, but the Wolves aren't going down easy, and here we go to overtime. 28 apiece, OT begins with Waukee Northwest from the, with the football from the 10-yard line of Valley. Out of the shotgun, they're going to hand it off right side. Spikes Muck spins through a tackle, still on his feet. Touchdown, oh my gosh. Northwest. Looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain. Instead, it's a touchdown. Wolves strike first on the first play. And we'll see on the replay. He broke a couple tackles. Mm -hmm. 
Good, strong running there out of Tanner Spikes, but he went wide. There's one, two, three, four, three tackles he broke to get into the end zone. A 10 yard touchdown run, and it makes it 34 28. Joaquin Northwest now will line up for the PAT after the touchdown from Spikesma. On to attempt the PAT, Andrew Port. Four for four so far here tonight. He's got the kick, plenty of leg. It is good through the right side, 35-28. And now Valley will get an opportunity to respond. Now here's where you have a lot of options too. You got, you know, your running back, your quarterback. You also have Raritan, the 6'7 tight end to look for. But now for Waukee Northwest, they know they get a stop, they win. Mm -hmm. And Valley knows they can't, a field goal doesn't do it. You gotta get it into the end zone and oh. make the PAT. Oh, well, makes it easy, you know you got four plays. Yep. Starting from the 10 yard line also simplifies things, though it does also compress it. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about those targets, including big Eli Raird in the future. Notre Dame tight end. He had a 78 yard touchdown grab earlier. He's lined up wide right with Brevin Good in the slot next to him. On the left side, it's Reed Chill. Three receivers for the quarterback, Mason Mark. Out of the gun, Brevin Good comes in motion. They're going to hand it off. Rankins Jr. He breaks a tackle to the five. Still on his feet wow. to the two-yard line. Again, a on first down. It'll be second and goal from the two. I said, hey, Spikes, man. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these two running backs, man. That was all the last several yards all on his own, too. And we're going to get the heavy formation now coming in. A couple extra big guys. Rankins comes over to the sideline. Looks like a crampy ad is. They're stretching him out. As Danny Rankins Jr., the fine running back for the Tigers, makes his way to the sideline. Second and goal from the two. Play clock to 12 as they break the huddle. High formation for Valley, dotting that eye. Tight end on the right. Deion Hutch. We're going to go to the fullback. Nothing there. He has stood up right at the line. It'll be third and goal from the two. Try to give it to the fullback. But Drew Henderson, who would come into the game, normally a defensive player, they gave him the ball there. And that will make it third and goal from the two. Maybe even lost a yard, Dark. Yeah, he's back, I think, probably, yeah, to the three. He did lose a yard. They had that full backfield and trying to do maybe a little misdirection there, but. Third and goal from the three. Valley down a touchdown in overtime. Have to score a touchdown to have a chance to extend this game. I formation again. They'll hand it off again. Bursting forward. Did he get in? He did. Touchdown. Touchdown, yep. touchdown Tigers. I formation. They pounded forward. And the score for Valley. And that one is credited to Dion Hutch. Hutch, the little guy who came in as Rankins Jr. was fighting through that cramp. He gets the six and now an extra point away from moving us to OT2. It'll be Dawson Stein on to attempt the PAT. Stein, right-footed kicker. Hold down, kick on its way. He got it. 35-35, overtime number one in the books. We get another one. Didn't you say it was going to be a tight fought defensive battle, uh, low scoring uh, because of the first game? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I wasn't sure what to expect, really, but, you know, yeah. 70 points combined in this one as we're tied at 35. OT2, we will just go back the other way. Now, Valley will start here the second overtime with the football Northwest. Then we'll get the second opportunity. Well, with the way the running game went there, you got to think the Valley probably thinking about just going right back to the well again. Yeah, just hand it off right up the gut because that's where it worked for him. And you got uh, one running back goes down, and you just bring in another one to load it up. Hank, uh, Rankins Jr. out, and uh, Hutch comes in, and boom. Dar, you're gonna run out of room there on your scoring. Yeah, team. I'm getting down to uh, to the last couple lines there on that. 
And in fact, <laughs> I, I thought I had a football one, but I grabbed a soccer one, but it works out about the same. I just have to do a little more writing there, but I'm running out of spots on it. 35-35, a little extra time here in between. While we have a moment, we can get ready for the second overtime. Thanks again to our high school football sponsors here on 96.9 The Bull and CISN TV, including Wolf Construction Roofing, Victory Mounds, the Urology Center of Iowa, the Rookie Sports Cards, the Norwalk Shop for your printing apparel needs, Sinorama of Urbandale, Rush Niggett of Brick Gentry Law PC, Graphite Construction Group, Elite Eye Care on University Avenue in West Des Moines, Central Bank, our fairway matchup here this evening, along with Interior Advantage, hip replacement. OT2 starts with West Des Moines Valley with the football from the 10 yard line of Northwest. Going right to left across your radio dial or as you're watching us here on CISN TV. Pressure comes offside. Coming off the edge, trying to time things up there perfectly. That was the Cash Harry Linen. There'll be a five yard penalty, first and goal now from the five. the distance to the goal, five yard penalty. Same thing here as they started at the 10. Morrow from the shotgun, he'll hand it off. There's a run into the end zone, first play. A touchdown for the Valley Tigers. Right back to the run game, and this time, Danny Rankins Jr. got through the cramping issue, and he's got six. It's 41-35 with the PAT coming. And he just winded his way through there like he's Going through the corn at the Field of Dreams, you know, <laughs> looking for that opening. Just sliding right in there into the end zone. Back on for another point after touchdown attempt. Dawson Stein, the junior. Knocks this one through and 42-35 after the main PAT from Dawson Stein. Now Waukee Northwest will get the opportunity and it's the exact same scenario we just mentioned, Dar. They know you got four downs to play with here. And the way that they have been played, the way they're built, certainly anticipate Northwest, they're gonna keep it on the ground themselves. Now for West Des Moines Valley, does that mean defensively, you know, you're going for a run blitz. You're going all out here and see, maybe on that first down play, if you can put them behind the sticks. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. Depends on that, that read option, how they run it, but. If you can get a big stop, that's always a key in these overtimes. If you can get them behind the chains early. 42-35, Valley with the lead in second overtime. Waukee Northwest in their varsity debut. With the quarterback Rinkin from the gun. Zone read, he's gonna keep it himself in the middle of the field. Still on his feet, looked like he was down at the six. Rolled through, he's got just short of a touchdown. Wow, man. Got nine and a half from the 10 yard line. He was nearly down Stunt at the, the six. Yeah, the six to the five, and then he just kept rolling through there. It looked like the defender, he was on top of the defender. Knee never went down, he just spun out of the tackle. I think the defensive player thought he had him. And he gets nine and a half. It'll be second and goal from inside the one for Waukee Northwest. The Wolves go under center now. And they're going to try to sneak a rank. And he was hit right away and didn't get in. Yep. No push up front that time. Valley just stonewalled him there at the line. It'll be third and goal from inside the one. And they go back right to the well here with Carson Rankin in the quarterback sneak. We will we'll see. see. Yep. Powerhouse formation. Rankin under center. He'll sneak it again. Leaning forward. Still no signal. Still no signal. Still nothing. Touchdown. Touchdown. <laughs> Finally. Oh, they waited and waited and finally gave him the six. 42-41, Waukee Northwest now an extra point away from tying it or a two point conversion away from winning it. The Wolves are gonna keep the offense on the field. They're gonna try to win this game right here. 
second overtime. They're going for two and the win. They spot it at the three yard line. Valley trying to get a timeout, they will. Then now Ooh. the Arise consider with right. the timeout. After the timeout, a little more time to think. Corey Kapadich in his debut as a head coach. He's rolling the dice as of right now at least. Looking to go for two. And those kind of things are always second guess, but it's the coach saying, hey, where are we at right now and what can we do to win this game? we got a shot to do it here, you know, and, and, and go for it and have your trust in him. And you may come up short, but. Three yards away from winning their first game at the varsity level on the gridiron against uh, what many people consider will be their rival going forward. Of course, you got the two walkie schools, but Dara, I think I've told it to you before. I've always been told Valley Dowling, that's a rivalry, but it's friendly. It's kids yeah. you grow up with. It's the walkie schools against the West Des Moines schools. That's where the real rivalry yeah. is. And because Waukee was for years been as they grew fighting to get you know on an even toehold with them, and they kind of got that way, and then they split up. <laughs> well, Northwest tried to take the first game of this series as they go for two. One shot at a victory out of the shotgun. It's Rankin, puts a man in motion. He's gonna flip it up, both knocked wow. away! Valley wins, Tigers win it on the deflection! Jay Moore! Double overtime win as West Des Moines Valley survives. 42-41, the deflection off the end by Jay Moore. Valley moves to 1-0 on the year. Northwest, yay. Hang their heads high after that one. Left for dead after giving up 23 in the third quarter. They came roaring back. They went for the win. Credit to that staff, credit to those kids. That was a great football game. Yeah, and then the Valley defense, you're thinking, man, they're they're just gas as Joaquin Northwest came back. They got the block punt to get back into it, but what a ball game and and you know, there's so much to, to look at here, so many good things for both teams in this first ball game. We're going to take a timeout. Catch our breath. We'll let you as well. Thank our great sponsors here of high school football. When we come back, we will hand out our Graphite Construction Group hard hat player of the game. And there is a long list of young men that could be certainly called our player of the game. Final score in double overtime. West Des Moines Valley 42, Waukee 41. We'll come back here in the moment with the post-game show on the Bull and CISN TV. Guys, are you looking for an excuse to watch football all weekend long? Then schedule your vasectomy with the Urology Center of Iowa. The Urology Center of Iowa offers nitrous during your vasectomy, cutting-edge technology to help you relax during your procedure. Make the call to 515-400-3550. That's 400-3550 or online at iowauro.com. Vasectomies with the Urology Center of Iowa. And tell them you heard it on KXNO. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. If you're into sports cards, there's one place to go in Central Iowa. The Rookie Sports Cards and Clive. From current boxes and packs of sports cards, vintage cards, autographed helmets and jerseys, and the weekly bid board. Plus, you can cash in your old cards at The Rookie. Find it all at The Rookie Sports Cards in Clive. 9992 Swanson Boulevard or online, therookiesportscards.com. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. 
When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at BBB.org backslash Iowa. the ball. Trent Condon, Dar Danielson back with you one final time high atop Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. In double overtime, the Valley Tigers hold off the Northwest Wolves 42-41. Northwest went for two there in double overtime, but Jay Moore made the play as he deflected away the pass and wins it for the Tigers. Oh, I'm still catching my breath, Dar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that, that was a game. A good way to start the season, you know. I've been so anxious to get get and watch the game and, and the, do the game, and now it comes out this way. And history making for Waukee Northwest, their first game. It'll be one that went to double overtime. Not quite the ending they wanted, but it'll be one they'll talk about forever. And uh, <laughs> wow, they go for two and. And uh, just a big play by Valley. Well, and you, you also wonder, you know, the decision there for Coach Kapadich. You know these kids have blend out the field. It was a super hot night. Yeah. How long do you let that go, you know, before you make that decision? You make one play for three yards. I love the decision. I love the play call. They had it out there. Yeah. Jim Moore just made a play. Yeah, he just cut through and, uh, you know, because he had him in that flat. If he catches it, mm -hmm. maybe he spins through yep. and, and gets, you know, the two-point conversion. 42-41, Dar, before we get out of here, time to hand out our Graphite Construction Group hard hat player of the game. I love to put it on my color men, then I don't get the hate mail. So, And this <laughs> well, one is hard because I, there's so many games that it's easy. You know, there's somebody that has yeah. the stats, has the number. This was a team effort really from both sides. It was, but, you know, I'd say it came down to the final play that, that, that sealed it, so I'd say Jay Moore mm -hmm. if it were me, you know. Absolutely. Jay Moore, and he was all over the place. He made yeah. a lot of nice plays. He really stood up in a big way. One of the smaller linebackers, I'm going to guess, that Valley has had in a long time. He's listed at just 5'10", 170 pounds. He's slender, but he made plays off the edge all night long. He tackled in space very well. I'm with you. That's a great call, and he made the final play. Jay Moore, senior outside linebacker for the Valley Tigers, our graphite construction group, hard hat player of the game. Dar, before we get out of here, final thoughts from you. Well, it's just a good way to start the season. Both these teams showed some resiliency to come back. And then, uh, you know, double overtime on a really warm night and fought it out. And, you know, the, all the stuff about you make your most improvement between game one and two. There is, you know, a lot to look at here. A lot of good things for both teams. Uh, a lot of improvement, too, where uh, teams look like they, they were out ready to put the other one away, but they couldn't. And then they came back. So, you know, just... Just a great way to start the high school football season. A great way to start the Northwest tradition for Waukee. Wolves and the Tigers. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of these two teams facing off in future years in some big games. Here it goes to the Valley Tigers. 42-41 in double overtime. Jay Moore, our Graphite Construction Group hard hat player of the game. Well, that'll do it for our coverage here tonight. Of course, we'll have multiple high school games each and every week on CISN TV. You can catch the video stream there. For those that are listening on the radio side on 96.9 The Bull, make sure to spread the word. We're on KXNO HD2 also. You can also find us that way if you have an HD radio in your vehicle. New spot for us with the play-by-play. -play. Happy to be on live this season with the iHeart Media Group. You can find us 96.9 thebull.com. You can also find us at a bunch of other places and, of course, on the iHeart app. So let people know. We'll be with you with our Central Iowa Game of the Week all season long, both on the radio and the video side. Next week for me, it'll be up in Ankeny. Myself and Paul Yeager will bring you Ankeny versus Ankeny, Centennial versus the Hawks in our Game of the Week. Final score for the final time. Valley wins it 42-41 in double overtime over Waukee. Northwest for Dar Danielson. I'm Trent Con, and thanks for joining us on High School Football here on the Bull and CISN TV. Good night, everyone. New Country 96.9, the Bull.